Yeah, so I'm the House Majority Leader, so my role is pretty big as umbrella over Republicans. Um, their problems are kind of my problems, and they, they come to me, and I help them navigate to get to the finish line on certain things. And, of course, right now we've, we've got the congressional lines that are in the courts, and we're waiting on their response. But I think ultimately next year we're going to – my goal personally is going to be working on workforce development, um, trying to get these help-wanted signs off of the windows of all these – places where people can be working well i i guarantee you that uh there's no person better that's representing us uh we appreciate that and it is awesome i love meeting alums um you know i i didn't get my undergraduate here but i got my master's degree here so you know and and having been here almost 20 years now i feel like i've i kind of belong now, oh you, you most know? definitely you uh, did <laughs> after a week of being here <laughs> absolutely but uh we appreciate it scott uh for you uh coming in and visiting with us i hope you enjoy the game today and hopefully we'll get to have you back uh have you back real soon absolutely thanks Fa for having me fantastic Will. that's scott Stet Stet stegan golly i have just totally butchered that one all day long but scott we appreciate it we'll take a short break here on slyrock.com That's one. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. That was awesome uh, to get an opportunity to speak with our House Representative Scott Stack Stagen. And uh, we are going to preview some more of the game with me today. Someone that I have mentioned on numerous occasions during basketball season, baseball season. My good friend Philip Akins, he's going to provide color today. We had some... Uh, Scheduling conflicts, Philip uh, decided that he was going to answer the call and make his debut with us today. Philip, welcome to the broadcast, my friend. It's good to have you. That's awesome. Good to be up here. That is awesome. Philip uh, is, is a staple in our athletic department. He helps produce uh, a lot of our radio broadcasts here from the YouTube uh, side of things, and he's going to join us this afternoon. But first things first, Philip. We've got an awesome afternoon for football. We're about 20 minutes away from getting this one kicked off. Angelo State comes in, number five in the country. 12-1 and one last year. They went through a, a nice little run um, all the way to the quarterfinals uh, of the national uh, championship. Fell to the Colorado School of Mines 42-24, a team that they beat in week two, 30-27. It was an overtime win, but West Alabama comes in. They are... You know, they're looking to get things rolling here. I mean, we're talking about a team that uh, has had football since 1938, my man. 1938. I don't remember 1938, even though some folks would say that I do. Um, I only remember it, remember it very vaguely. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. West, um, West Alabama comes in. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to see a little bit of a new look we've got we've added some new staff we have new added offensive coordinator. offensive coordinator uh carmen felis now he's not n new to the program he's just new in that role he was with us before he spent a couple of years at slippery rock and and he's back with us now and you know really looking forward to that but uh you know a tiger team that last year scored about 23 points a game they averaged just shy 
of 390 yards of total offense. The defense held teams to under 20 points last year, and they held teams to rushing of under 170. So, you know, we got a lot of cool things going on. Um, a lot of potential. We, we've got some great potential. The cheerleaders are out there uh, this afternoon trying to get uh, some encouragement going on here. We've got uh, the, looks like the Jumbotron there is going through some of the starting lineup as the West Alabama starters are introdu being introduced there. But uh, Tigers started off last season. They, they were on a, we were on a they, they were on a little bit of a roll. They were on a roll in, you know, inside on the road. But then, uh, you know, fell fell off a little bit. They ended up finishing five and six overall. But, uh, you know, this year's a totally new year. New year, new, like you said, new staff. Uh, there's a lot of potential. doesn't matter who you're playing. You just got to play the game. That's exactly right. I was able to talk to uh, Coach Brett Gilliland earlier uh, in the afternoon. We'll have an opportunity to hear from him after the next break. So we're going to take a short break, then we'll come back. We'll... Here's some words from Coach Brett Gilliland here on your station for Tiger Football, Slyrock.com.
Station Tiger Tailgate. Season opener here on a Thursday night. I'm Will Atkinson. I'll be bringing the play-by-play. Philip Akins is going to do the color with me tonight, and we should have a fantastic opportunity to see two pretty darn good teams play some football tonight. West Alabama picked fourth in the preseason coaches poll and receiving votes in the AFCA poll um, in that top 25. And they, the Tigers had a couple of preseason all-GSC candidates. Darius Nalls, a wide receiver, he was a second-team all-GSC selection just a year ago. He led the team in receptions with 40 touchdowns with six. He hails from Fayette, Alabama, had 499 yards through the air last season, averaged over 12 yards a catch. He was a preseason selection. Devontae Bryant, defensive end, he was named first-team all-conference last year. He led the GSCs in tackles for a loss with 15. He also added three-and-a-half sacks a year ago. He hails from Pensacola. Jamal Ellis on the D-line, collected second-team honors last year. He's a senior from McDonough, Georgia. He posted 10 and a half tackles for a loss to finish second in the team behind Devontae Bryant last year. And six of those tackles were quarterback sacks, so he is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Shamar Lewis, one of the defensive backs, first team defensive back a year ago, 53 tackles, three for a loss, broke up three passes and had two interceptions. Trevon Stanford, senior linebacker from Manchester, Georgia, Second on the team last year in tackles with 63. And he's one of those guys that he's a threat uh, for the opposition's front line there. He's nine and a half stops behind the line of scrimmage. And to round out those preseason all-GSC selections, Kel Williams, another defensive player, second team all-GSC a year ago, 37 tackles, four and a half for a loss. And he added four breakups. And, uh, I mean, you talk about guys, Phillip, that, you know, get – these uh, honors preseason. I mean, we've got some guys that are pretty stout on defense coming back. Yes, sir. I mean, we had multiple All-Americans on defense last season as well. So, um, I believe the defense is pretty oh, national anthem. Um, Looks like we're going to have the national anthem performed by the marching band here. So, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll get the starting lineups here on the Sumter County Farmers Federation Tiger Tailgate. Welcome back to Tiger's Tailgate, Tiger Tailgate, Sumter County Farmers Federation Tiger Tailgate here in Tiger Stadium. The national anthem complete by the UWA marching band, and we're about four and a half minutes away from getting this one kicked off. Some some things that uh, going on in college football this year that um, that I, I don't think are going to be a huge difference maker, but a few rule changes. We'll, we'll touch on those. Starting in 1968, the clock stopped after first downs. Yes, sir. And 
The Rules Committee has revisited rule number 3-3-2E1 for all the uh, stat, stat uh, gurus at home. And no longer will the clock stop on the first down except with less than two minutes remaining in any half. So in the sec first half or second half there. That's something that's new. That is a rule that has been lifted directly from, I believe, one of the recent spring leagues that popped up, either the Alliance of American Football or the USFL. Um, both of those leagues had that exact rule where the clock ran no matter what. You could step out of bounds, whatever. The only time the so clock stops would be last two minutes of any quarter or if obviously if a player's injured. So that's right, okay. Taking that in, they're just trying to speed up the game, I believe. Yeah, I think it's probably, and I've talked with Coach G about it. We talked off air. It's probably going to save you probably somewhere around – I don't know, five to seven plays a, plays a contest. But yeah. uh, it's not going to be as big a factor here um, just because there's not as many media timeouts and, and that type of thing. But also um, one of the things that uh, there, there's no longer going to be the ability to call consecutive timeouts. So the back-to-back -back timeouts, you know, where you're trying to ice a kicker or something similar to that, um, not going to be an option here with a new rule. That gets you a delay of game penalty, and we have already seen that penalty happen. Um, Jacksonville State played UTEP in their first FBS conference um, game as a member of the Conference USA, and UTEP's coach in the ball game he he got a five yard penalty because he tried to call back to back timeouts against Jacksonville State. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's something that's going to take getting used to. The captains are meeting at midfield. For West Alabama, not in uniform, Austin Cosby. It'll be number one, Darius Knowles. Also number six, Shamar Lewis. And number 20, Caleb Bass, as they meet at midfield. I hear Jason Gardner, our public address announcer. Now, we've got a little bit different look here in Tiger Stadium. We've, we've had some improvements to the stadium since last season. They've added... Uh, some new sky boxes, and we've gotten uh, we've gotten new windows here in the press box. Now, it's a little different from uh, years past. Usually, we were able to just lift up the windows and, and get a little bit more of that uh, crowd noise. But uh, these windows are closed, so we'll we'll try to work toward getting a crowd mic. As Angelo State won the toss, they have elected to defer. And it looks like West Alabama will be going toward the Homer Fieldhouse. So that's the way we'll start. We will be going left to right on your radio dial. Angelo State, they are wearing their road whites. They've got white jerseys trimmed in gold and blue. Helmets that look much like a, an L.A. Rams helmet, blue with the kind of gold ram there and blue pants. Now, West Alabama will go with their Home reds, red pants, red jerseys, white numerals, West Alabama across the chest, red headgear with the Tiger logo. Both of the teams are, both of the captains rather, making their way to their respective sidelines. The band and cheerleaders have created a tunnel of sorts for the Tigers to make their way on the field, and they look very much anticipation as the Tigers take the field led by my man Ryan Cram for the 2023 season. And we're about to get this one underway here in Tiger Stadium. Angelo State comes in ranked number five in the country, rightly so. They led the Lone Star Conference last year in offense and defense, led the nation in defense for a big majority of the year. So uh, they... They definitely come in with a, an impressive resume from a year ago, but the new look Tigers ready to get things going here in Tiger Stadium in front of the home crowd. Still folks making their way into the stadium. The lower section almost completely full now. Pretty good crowd for the newly renovated Tiger Stadium. But there's always a good crowd in Livingston. I tell you what, it, I mean, this is, this is the best ticket in town as... Both teams make their way to their respective benches. Coach Brett Gilliland 
leads the Tigers his 10th season, 56 and 36 overall, winning his coach in UWA history. Jeff Gersh in his fifth season, 33 wins and nine losses during his tenure at Angelo State. They, they, they hail from San Angelo, Texas, and that's just a, just a quick little jump across uh, quite a few states, 796 miles, 12 hours if you're going to drive it. Back deep to return for West Alabama will be, looks like it's going to be Darius Nelson, Bry Webb. They will be the deep man. Webb's got his heels on the goal line. And Nelson standing at about the three. Angelo State to kick it off to get things rolling. Webb will field it at the seven. He'll take it across the 15, makes a move at the 20, finds opposition there, barrels his way to the 24-yard line, and West Alabama will start first down and 10 from their own 24. Nice little return right there. Tigers will be led by signal caller Tucker Melton, 6'2", 220-pound, sophomore out of Phoenix City, Alabama, led the Tigers last year. He brings them to the line. First and 10 for the Tigers from their own 24. They're going left to right. It's a three wide, two wide receiver set, Webb in the backfield. Hand off to Webb. He'll camp, carry right side. He... Gets to the original line of scrimmage. He'll gain a yard on the play, so it'll be second down and nine. Webb carries for a yard. Melton looks to the sideline. Three wide receiver set. That's going to be Knowles, Hilbert, and Darius Nelson. Webb in the backfield to his right. Fakes the handoff, wants to go on the Andy slant Brown. route. Right across intended receiver, Darius Knowles falls incomplete. Just looked like it hit him on the wrist. Pretty good coverage right there, and then uh, just uh, got on him a little quicker than I think he anticipated. That'll bring up third down and nine from the Tigers. They work from the 25. Melton in the gun, Webb in the backfield. Four wide receivers. It'll be trips to the top side. One guy here to the near side. Webb barks out the cadence. Ten on the play cock. He, he brings Webb up to his left. Snap, hand off to Webb. Comes left side across the 25. Battles his way to the 30. Leg still going. He gets down to the 32-yard line. He'll come up short of the first down, but a good run on third and long for Bry Webb. Yeah. A good run, just not enough. But Angelo State does have one of the standard defenses in the whole of Division Two, so... Angelo State, no doubt. I mean, they've got a big, they've got a big defensive front. They average on the defensive side of things, 6'2", 271. Back to punt for West Alabama. That's going to be Trey Sullivan. Sullivan, high spiral. It'll be fair caught at about the 24-yard line. So Sullivan flips the field as Andrew Pitts calls for the fair catch. 13-31 remaining here in this first quarter. A good first series for the West Alabama offense. And now we'll get a time, an opportunity to see that West Alabama defense that, uh, you know, they, they have boasted quite a bit of success as of late and have some pretty prominent guys coming back on defense. Yeah, this should be, should be a scary defense in the whole of the GSC, sir. At quarterback. That's going to be Gerald Garner. Drops back, wants to throw, gets the receiver at the 30, crosses the 30, drug down. Tackle's going to be made by Jamarcus Smith. It's going to be a first down for, for Angelo State. He got one more yard than he needed. Picks up the first down. It'll be first down and 10 from 35. Garner puts a man in motion. Hands off to the back in the backfield. Opposition at the line of scrimmage carrying the football. That's going to be Cason Phillips. Great job on the defensive side of things. No gain for the Rams as West Alabama's defense flocked to the ball carrier. 
and cut him down right about the numbers as he got back to the original line of scrimmage. Angelo State will have second down and 10. Two backs, one on either side there of Garner. Three wide receivers. He puts a man in motion. Hands off. Number four on the carry. That's Phillips. Finds a hole, gets across the 40, down to the 45, and they'll move the chains once again. It'll be first down and 10 from the 45. More subs. Substitutions coming in for Angelo State. As Gerald Garner, the 6'3", 215-pound grad senior from Houston, Texas, leads the pack, hands off. Once again, that's going to be to Phillips. Offensive line doing a pretty good job there for the Rams. It'll be a four-yard gain on the play. Garner looks to the sidelines. He's got, he's got trips to the top side. One wide receiver here to the near side in the backfield. That's Cason Phillips, a 5'9 junior. Hands off to Phillips, stutter step at Gets the line. Great job right there by West Alabama as they shut him down after a no gain. Tackle's going to be made by number 32, Jamal Ellis. I mean, he was flying all over the field. Great job right there by the Tigers. That'll bring up third down. Third down and seven. Garner brings them to the line. Four wide receivers set, two here to the near side. Phillips in the backfield. Two Garners right. Three-step drop. Pressure by West Alabama. He voids tackle. Throws across the middle. Intended receiver for Rasheen Green, and that one's going to fall incomplete. Great tackle. Great pressure, rather, by West Alabama's defense. Well, if anything, for the first two drives I've seen, this is going to be a very defensive-focused ball game. Both defenses have shown up and, and shown out here in the first couple of series. Cade Fuller will come on to punt for the Rams. Back deep for West Alabama will be Darius Nelson, the six-foot redshirt freshman. Birmingham, Alabama, Huffman High School product. He stands at his own 10. Off the... Side of the foot there. That one's going to go out of bounds at about, it looks about the 26-yard line as West Alabama will have pretty decent field position as that one come off the, the right foot there of the punter, Cade Fuller. A little, uh, a little odd there. But West Alabama will take it as the offense trots back out onto the field. Tucker Melton leading the way. Webb will be the back in the backfield. Receiver here to the near side will be Darius Nalls. And looks like Nelson on the far side. We've got the tight end. Caleb Bass in there. Webb on the pitch. Takes it around right in. Gets it across the 25 out to the 29-yard line. Is that about a three-yard gain on the play? Nothing, nothing, your score here with 10.05 to go in this first stanza. Opening uh, game of the 2023 season. Tucker Melton, he'll bring Knowles here to the near side. Two men in the backfield. That'll be Webb and Nelson. Hands off to Nelson. He tries to go around the left side in the quickness of Angelo State. Takes him down for a loss, and he's going to lose about six yards on the play. So it'll be third down and really long. It'll be third down in York with a five-wide receiver set. They work from their own, we'll call it 28-yard line. Melton with a hard count. Brings Webb up to his right here, three Three wide receivers here to the near side. Hands off to Webb. Webb dances around. He's going to gain a couple of yards, and then the ball comes loose, and it looks like Angelo State is going to fall on it, so it'll be a turnover, West Alabama. 
Well, now we know in the GSC this year we have replay. Um, I'm not so certain that he wasn't down, but that's why we have the new um, replay system. We'll check here in a second, I believe. But we'll see if they go to that. We'll see. It doesn't look like they're making any any lean that way. Head referee Brian Deadweiler, I guess, felt like they had a pretty good handle on it. So Angelo State forces the turnover. They're inside. They're in Tiger territory just outside of the red zone. They'll start first down and 10 from the 23. Gardner will work from the gun. Phillips to his right. They are working from the right. Hash fakes the handoff. Garner will keep it himself. Goes around right in. He's got a blocker, and he's got open real estate. And he will go in untouched for the first score of the contest from 23 yards out. Angelo State gets into the end zone for their first touchdown of the season on to attempt the PAT. Looks like it's going to be Bradley Larson, the junior, out of Prosper, Texas. Six nothing, your score. Snaps good, the holds good. The kick, it's up, and it will get through the uprights. Angelo State leads it seven to nothing. You're watching Flow Sports and listening to SlyRock.com. We'll take a quick break when we come back. More Tiger football. up so I'm just going to call this over. Received at the three-yard line. It'll be Webb. He'll bring it across the 10, the 15. He'll come down to the 20. He'll make his way out to the 22-yard line. Bry Webb brings that one out to the 22-yard line after an end-over-end -end kick that was fielded at the three. So West Alabama will have an opportunity to go to work first down and 10 here. From about the 23, Angelo State gets in the end zone on a 23-yard run. They slipped in the their, I guess their Wildcat quarterback, Chad Ferries. He was able to take it in there, but Tucker Melton will bring them out. Second series for the Tigers. Stack wide receivers here to the near side. Webb's in the backfield. Melton. 
He'll put Hilbert in motion. Fakes the handoff. Wants to go here near side. Intended receiver. That's number 20, Caleb Bass. The tight end just overthrew him a little bit. That one's going to fall incomplete. He had some room in front of him if he had caught that ball, but just a little bit over his head. Just missed him. Caleb Bass, one of those guys. I mean, he's a, a veteran player here on this offense. Third leading receiver last year. He caught 28 passes. It'll be second down and 10 for the Tigers. Snap to Melton. Three-step drop. Wants to go across the middle. He hits Nelson at the 25. Stiff arm. He gets to the 30. The 35 lowers his shoulder. Spins. He'll go out of bounds at the 39-yard line. It's a West Alabama first down. That was a good physical that was a good physical run by um, that's Darius Nelson. Nelson. Yep. Darius Nelson, good little pass, spring pass across the front. Take that all day. That's about 12 yards. Nice gainer. First down and 10 from the 39. It'll be a three wide receiver set. Fakes the handoff to Webb. He wants to go downfield. Intended receiver once again, Darius Nelson overthrew him by about five yards. Good coverage for Angelo State. And that'll bring up second down and 10 for West Alabama. Angelo State was just all over that pass from the beginning. Yeah, you don't get to be the Lone Star uh, defensive leader uh, for nothing there. And they're able to put some good coverage on Nelson. It'll be a four wide receiver set, two here to the near side. Melton surveys the scene, throws across the middle, gets it to Bass. Bass catches it, gets it across the 45, dives for the 47-yard line, just shy, about a yard shy of the first down marker. It'll be bring up third down. It looks like we're finally getting to some sort of rhythm here. Let's see if we can't get this. Third down and one. West Alabama will be working from their own, we'll call it the 48. Hands off to Webb. Webb, excuse me, that's going to be Antonio Brown. Brown gets tackled for about a yard loss, and that'll bring up fourth down, and eh, it's a fourth down and two. West Alabama decides they're not going to chance it here. They'll bring on the special teams unit. It'll be Trey Sullivan, 5'8", senior from Leroy, Alabama product. He'll be uh, punting this one away from the right hash. Back deep is Andrew Pitts. He stands at his own 10. It's a good snap. Sullivan, high spiral. Solid punt. High spiral. Fair, fair catch right there by Pitts. Flags come in from the back judge there. Number one on for Angela State shaking his head. I wonder if he did something. We the, might. The officials confer here. We might have a fresh set of doubts in our hands. We'll see what... Uh, Brian Detweller and his crew come across, but it was the it was the deep official that that threw the flag. Angela State's keeping their um, getting their defense out there, and uh, now now yeah now they're heading on the sideline. It's going to be holding. That one's going to go against Angelo State. What it's the back it up to about the uh, looks like the six yard line, yeah, between the six and the seven. We'll just call it six and a half. It'll be first and ten from about the six, six forty to go, seven nothing. Your score, Tigers trail. Back in at quarterback will be number nine, Gerald Gardner. In the backfield, that'll be Cason Phillips. Fakes the handoff to Phillips. Throws cross on the right side. That one's going to be caught, taken across the 30, the 35. West Alabama drags him down at about, we'll call it the 34-yard line. So a big gain right there for Angelo State and another first down. Just a good matchup for Angela State right there.
Garner's got Phillips to his left. Two wide receivers and a tight end here. He brings Phillips to the left. Hand off to Phillips. Hole up the middle. Good hard running. He crosses the 40. Brought down at the 41-yard line. It'll be a gain of about seven yards on the play. Angelo State seems to really like their little chunk yardage plays, and they also seem to really like running up the middle with um, um, Phillips. Phillips. Yeah, yeah. Phillip Phillips is pretty strong. I mean, the the O-line for Angelo State, 6'4", 3'12", on the average. In case of Phillips, not that big of a guy either. He's 5'9", 190, but he can move and he can hit. Hands off to Phillips. He goes left side, spins off the tackle. Short of the first down, it'll be third down and short as West Alabama trying to impede this progress of this Rams offense. Tigers trail it seven to nothing here with five minutes to go in the first quarter. We have a chance to get off the field right here. Chad Ferries back in at quarterback. He had the 23-yard run. Nobody in the backfield. Three wide receivers. So watch the legs of Ferries as he brings a man in motion. Ferries is going to keep it designed. Grice goes right up the middle. Met at the line of scrimmage is Ferries. And they give it to him. And they are going to just get the first down. Great effort right there by Kel Williams. As he filled up the hole, but not able to stop Ferries from getting that, that first down marker. They go back with their passing quarterback. That's Gardner, grad senior from Houston, Texas. Fakes the handoff. He'll keep it himself. Whole host of Tigers there in on the tackle. He faked the handoff to Braden Wilcox. Didn't get much of anything right there. UWA just sniffed that out. That's yeah, a great job right there by the Tiger defense. They oh, host negative Tiger. negative play right there for the West Alabama defense. We're going to need as many as those we can get tonight. I mean, Angelo State has shown already that they can move the ball almost at will if they want to. Garner's in. Four wide receivers set. Three-step drop. Looks here to the left side. Floats one. He just had to get rid of that. A lot of pressure right there by West Alabama. The nearest receiver, that's Rasheen Green, the redshirt sophomore from Katy, Texas. We, we, defensive end got some good pressure. It looked like he had one of his tackles almost in his face when he threw that. It was a pressure throw, just chucked it up. It was a receiver in the general vicinity, so he's not going to get intentional grounding. Those are one of those. Th those are a dangerous type of throw too. You can get that inter intercepted easy. Four-man front for the defensive Tigers. Garner, drop backs to throw, wants to go across Inter the middle. That's going to be intercepted by West Alabama, brought across midfield. He's across right. the midfield to the 40, the 30. He's ridden down at the 28. And what a fantastic job right there. I believe that was Artavius Washington yes, with the interception. The intended receiver going across the middle was Hunter Wallace. It went off of Wallace's fingertips right into the arms of the West Alabama deep man, and like he brings it all the way back to the Angelo State 28-yard line. Just looks like Gerald Garner never even saw him across the middle. As soon as he threw that ball, I guess, looking at the replay, yeah, as soon as he threw that ball, they, snuck, they sniffed it out, and it was just Artavius Washington just got a hold of it, and it was off to the races. He almost broke that, too. That was, I mean, it, it, the, 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 the receiver was there. It went off his fingertips, and then it just right into Washington's bread basket. He brings it down to the Angelo State 28. So it'll be Tucker Melton first down and 10 in Angelo territory. Excuse me, that's going to be Spencer Arsenault. He keeps it himself, Spencer. goes left side. He's across the 15, the 10, the 5. Yes, sir. West tough. Alabama touchdown. Yes, sir. I mean, can't do it up any better than that. Just took it to the left side of the field, left pylon. All you got to do. That was a nice job right there. Spencer Arsenault came in. 
Now, he's a Arsenal, freshman, isn't he? he's a redshirt sophomore out of yeah. Mobile, and, uh, you know, he got to play a little bit last year. He, he got a block, bounced it out into the left side, and uh, there was just open real estate. Coming in to hold will be Trace Sullivan. Kevin Butchers will do the kicking for West Alabama. Also checking in is Devonche Bryant. He'll work up front. So Sullivan to hold. Butchers to kick. It's a good snap, good hold. The kick's up, and it's good. That's a tie ball game. West Alabama gets in there from 27 yards out. Spencer Arsenault, the Mobile native. And then the right foot of Kevin Butchers ties it up here on Flow Sports. You're listening to SlyRock.com. We'll be right back. We've got 2.56 to go in this first quarter. We got a dandy here in Livingston. The Angela State's coming out of the Lone Star Conference. For the last few years of Division II football, it's basically been the GSC and the LSC when it comes to the top two. When it comes to the top two conferences in the whole of the whole of the division, um, Lone Star Conference has had multiple national champions, if I'm not mistaken. I know West West Florida, their first national championship game appearance was against. Oh, we have a little bit of extracurricular activity down the field. Butchers kicks that one through the end zone in uh, West Alabama. And Angelo State meet at the 25. They're discussing, uh, you know, who's going to bring the turkey to Thanksgiving dinner. And then they realized that uh, we're just still in the month of August. And then it was just uh, uh, an exchange of pleasantries. And then right back to football as usual. West Alabama's defense making their way. Devonche Bryant and company. Gerald Gardner, he'll bring out the offense. It'll be three wide receivers, two to the top side. Hands off to, that's going to be number 21, Wilcox. Nothing doing. It's going to be about a yard and a half, maybe a two-yard loss, doing a great job of getting in there defensively. I believe that was West Alabama's Ty Johnson. It looks like Ty just shot the gap right there, got in the backfield almost immediately. That play didn't have a chance to develop. That's when the, the speed of West Alabama can really can really help out. Among those guys up front, Trevor, up front for West Alabama, Travoris Hatcher, he's making, uh, he's making life tough for that offensive line there. As Gardner calls out the play call, fakes to Wilcox, trying to go across the middle and batted down, almost intercepted, getting a hand on it. The wrinkle in the jersey, but that may be Lamar Gray once again. It was either Lamar Gray 
or Uriah Ratliff. You can't tell when the numbers kind of compress there. Zeros and eights can kind of uh, get a little wonky, but it brings up third down nonetheless. We've got 210 to go in this first quarter. 7-7 seven, seven your score here in Livingston. I mentioned earlier there's going to be a defensive battle. Both teams are getting really good coverage. That was about the second interception for Angela State. Will Cox in the backfield. Low snap. Pressure by West Alabama. Garner's going to have to get rid of it, and he ditches it in a hurry. Credit the West Alabama defense as they were all over it. And these guys right now, I'm telling you, uh, not only led by Devonche Bryant, but also getting into the mix is looks like Michael Sharpley as West Alabama is going to force a punt here. That's going to bring on Cade Fuller, his last punt, kind of come off the foot a little wonky. Back to return for West Alabama will be Nelson. He stands at his own 37. Fuller catches it, gets it off, a wobbly spiral fielded at the 40 across the 45 by Nelson midfield he gets into the 40 it's Angelo territory he steps out of bound at the 38 and coach Brett Gilliland holy smokes he just got he's slapped. he's he's going to he's going to need to uh get his uh speed checked there because I haven't seen coach G move like that in a while all over the side official didn't see what was going on but uh, happy he was not. Angelo State's lucky they didn't get a late hit called on him. That was borderline. I think that's what Coach G probably saw right there. But West Alabama in Angelo State territory. First down and 10 from the 39. West Alabama going left to right on your radio dial. It'll be in the backfield. That looks like it's going to be Antonio Brown. Brown. Fakes the handoff, wants to go deep one-on-one -on -one with Darius Nalls. He was blanketed by his opposing number one, Kesa McCullough Cooper, and just a little too much on the activity there as he will be flagged, I will assume, on the defensive pass interference. I'm going to assume he just liked the felt, way his jersey fell in his hand or something because that was blatant, but at the same time, that was probably a touchdown saving pass because if he doesn't get held right there, that ball lands in his hands. He has nothing to stop him. Scoring. Yeah, I, I, you, you know, you got to, you got to take the good with the bad. And, you know, Kasem McCullough Cooper, you know, step for step there with Nelson. But uh, you're absolutely right. Saved a touchdown there, but it'll be first down and ten for the Tigers from the Angelo State 24. Arsenault is in for West Alabama. Hands it off. That's going to be to. Antonio Brown. Brown wanted to go around the left side. He just couldn't make the corner, and he's going to lose six yards on the play as Angelo State's defense flexing a little bit there on first down. So it'll be second down in about 16. West Alabama will work from the Angelo State 30-yard line. So far, besides for that one touchdown run, um, Angelo State's kind of had the outside runs locked down. Um, We'll see if they can continue that right here. Let's see what we do. Arsenault stays in for West Alabama. Pressure. Arsenault's going to have to get rid of it. He makes the complete pass. That's going to be to Nalls. I don't know how he got it to Nalls and had anything to, to get on it, but just a little slant there from the right side, and Nalls There's takes a, it down to the 20. There's a flag back down at the 42-yard line, and probably it looks like it's about to be a hold on West Alabama. We'll await the official call. It is a hold indeed on the Tigers. So the chain's continuing to go in the wrong direction. The first down marker is at the Angelo State 9, and we will work from the line of scrimmage at the 40. 56 seconds remaining in this first quarter. 7-7 seven, seven your score. Arsenault remains in at quarterback. In the backfield will be. That looks like it's going to be Brown. Simple second and 26. Second and 26, 45 seconds to go in the first stanza. Trips. Hands off to Brown. Brown stutter steps at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to lose more yardage. Relentless defense by Angelo State. Give a lot of credit to the guy leading the charge. That's Murray Robinson. 
6'2", 280-pound sophomore from Cedar Park, Texas. Again, another one of those outside runs. They've had those locked down so far this first quarter. Trips to the top side. We've got a lone wide receiver here to the near side. That's going to be Nalls. You'd like to get enough to be inside of field goal range. And that's going to take a little chunk here as Arsenault's the signal caller here. Yeah, Brown to his right. Run out. That will do it for the end of the first quarter. 7-7 seven, seven your score here in Tiger Stadium. You're watching Flow Sports and listening to Slyrock.com. Kick off this second quarter. West Alabama and Angelo State all knotted up at seven. You know. 17 plays for Angelo State, 82 yards, 14 plays for the Tigers, 52. As West Alabama's looking at a third down and 27, they're going to work from the Angelo State 41. They'd love to get inside range for. West Alabama to attempt a field goal, but they will they'll wait for the official here to get this second quarter underway. You know, we've been up in the radio together for so long now, but uh this is our first time calling a football game together, isn't it? That's right. You know, I mean we've we've worked uh, we've worked a lot of a lot of combinations of basketball, baseball and football in various capacities and uh, we've never both had the headsets on, but it's, uh, it's kind of a cool cool deal here for game number one. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned it earlier to me when we were walking down Alpha Farm Federation. They had catfish out for free, so obviously we went, um, Will and I went to go get some of that. You mentioned you had to get back in a football mindset. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I'm lucky enough to have uh, gone to every single Birmingham Stallions home game after baseball season, so um, yeah. I, I'm still kind of in a football mood. Yeah. Shout out to all my – Shout out to all the horsemen over there in Birmingham. Um, but um, Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I, I counted it up between the broadcast last year and, 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 uh, and PA duties here at the university. I, 
I had part in, in 103 ball games last year, and it was a lot of fun as West Alabama looks at a third down and 27. Arsenault's going to call the call the shots here for the Tigers. It'll be Brown to his left. Two wide receivers here to the near side. Arsenault keeps trying to make the left corner. Great pursuit by Angelo State. Credit number 41. That's Josh Booker Brown, 6'2", 240 junior from Houston, Texas, transferred out of Boise State, and he Cuts Arsenault down. So West Alabama not able to capitalize on great field position. And they're going to have to punt it away to do the punting duties there. Will be Trey Sullivan back to return. Will be Andrew Pitts. Pitts stands at his own 10. I'm going to be honest with you right there. I don't fully understand that play call for the third down. Third and, third and about 27, and you call it quarterback run? Uh, I'm not going to be Sullivan. Sullivan. Great punt. It's going to be a West Alabama bounce. It hits at the 10, rolls down to the 2, and down there to down it. Looks like it's going to be Bry Webb on the special teams, but uh, an end-over-end -end punt that hit at the 10. Angelo State scattered, and it rolls down to the 2. So West Alabama special teams doing a fantastic job right there to pin Angelo State down within the would be shadows of its own goal. 14 11 to go in the half, all knotted up at seven. Good crowd on hand here in Tiger Stadium. Lots of familiar faces walking around the stadium. A lot of familiar faces right below us in the newly renovated portions of the Tiger Stadium. No doubt, no doubt. I, I can see my father right down there on the right side. Garner in at quarterback. He'll hand off, I believe that's Phillips, dances around at the line of scrimmage. He'll cross the five. He'll get out to about, we'll call it the eight-yard line. So he gets them a little bit of breathing room right there on first down. So it'll be second down. And we'll call it second down and second down and four. I, I expect them to go to Phillips a few more times this drive. He can, he can definitely put the hurt on you if you don't watch him. Phillips is a solid back, six carries, 22 yards on the afternoon. He gets it here again. West Alabama doing a great job at the point of contact, leading the way. Oh. Traverius Hatcher, the 5'10", 300-pound junior from Macon, Mississippi. Ooh, from our angle, looks like he lost about a yard there. That was a, that was a nice job up front by the big guy. Like I said, he, he'll hurt you if you don't watch him. We watched him right there. Third down and five up front for West Alabama. It's going to be Hatcher. I see Sharpley up there doing some work. Garner's in off the Older. face mask, and Who's the ball's it? on the ground. We West got Alabama's it. got That's it. They go, into the, they go into the end zone, and it will be a West Alabama touchdown as the snap went off the face mask of the Angelo State quarterback. And West Alabama was able to scoop it up, put it in the end zone, and that will put the Tigers on top 13-7 to with a PAT forthcoming. This is a, this, so far in this game, we're only about, what, 16, 15, 16 minutes into this game? Um, there's already been three turnovers, and every single one of those turnovers seem to have resulted in some kind of points. Butchers in to attempt the PAT. Sullivan with a good strong hold. Butchers will split the uprights 14 to 7. The Tigers lead it here. 12.53 to go in the half. We'll take a quick break here on Flow Sports and Slyrock.com. What even? What even?
14-7 your score. West Alabama on top, 12-53 to go in the first half. And West Alabama's Trayvon Nunn was able to gather up the fumble, get it into the end zone for West Alabama's second touchdown of the afternoon. I'm looking at the roster here. Nunn, a freshman from Mobile, prepped at St. Paul's Episcopal. And welcome to college football, my friend. He's able to get in there for a Tiger score. That's just defense, defensive ends. But the, the Trey Nunn's a linebacker, but um, good Lord. That's just one of those confused. It's one of those plays that just happened on defense and it goes your way. Well, it, it, it all started. The snap was high, and Gardner, you know, he played it off the face mask, and then just a really good job right there of Nunn being able to just scoop and score from about probably that's like the three-yard line when he probably picked it up. But uh, nonetheless, it puts the Tigers on top. Butchers in to kick it away. Back deep for Angelo State will be Pitts. End over end kick. Field it at the four. He'll bring it across the 10, the 15, the 20. Comes to the numbers here across the 30. The 35 is pushed out of bounds. And I believe that's going to be Kevin Butchers as he gets the congratulatory slaps on the top of the helmet as the kicker forces him out of bounds. He put a little bit of hurt on him. I saw the number 18 go flying. I'll tell you, you know, uh, Butcher's not a big guy, but he was able to force him out of bounds. Butcher's listed 5'7", 160. He's those little stocky guys you got to watch out for. That running back over at Kansas State, he was, such, he was so dangerous. He was about 5'6". West Alabama's defense comes out to go to work. At quarterback for Angelo State will be Gerald Garner. He'll have two wide receivers to the top side of the field, one here to the near side. In the backfield, that's going to be Wilcox and a stoppage of play. It'll be an Angelo State timeout, I believe. We'll see the officials call the timeout. We'll take it with them. Your station, Tiger Football, you're watching Flow Sports, and you're listening on SlyRock.com. You want to be if you want to be serious with Layden, if you put me in this position of so the other. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. West Alabama leads it 14 to 7. West Alabama's amassed 45 total yards. Angelo State 79. Tucker Melton 2 of 5 for 25. Spencer Arsenault 2 carries for 20 yards. He did have a long of 27. But it's going to be first down and 10. Angelo State working left to right. They work from their own 38 yard line. And at quarterback is going to be Gerald Garner. Wilcox, the back to his left, moves the tight end. Throws out of the backfield to Wilcox, crosses the 40, the 45 to midfield, tiptoes, steps out of bounds. That's going to be inside Tiger territory at the 47-yard line. 
And they've been attacking the outside almost all day. Angelo State in Tiger territory, 12-22. Remaining in the first half, Tigers lead by seven. Garner in at quarterback. Hands off, that's going to be Wilcox, tripped up after he crosses the 45-yard line. They'll bring him down at the 44. So a positive yardage play for Angelo State, but West Alabama defense, they look to the sidelines to get their defensive assignments. Devonche Bryant, 6'7", 295, grad senior. He's leading the charge here for West Alabama. They'll put a man in motion, does Angelo State. That's going to be Ferries once again. He keeps it, takes it across the line of scrimmage, gains three yards. He gets down to the 40. He took a hit right there, about three Tigers swarmed on top of him. And he's coming off the field. Garner checks back in. Third down and three. Got a Tiger we, down. We have a Tiger slow to get up athletic training staff to check on him. We'll take a we'll take a injury timeout here on your station for Tiger football. Slyrock.com. You're watching Flow Sports. Hudson Burns helps Devonche Bryant up. He comes to the sideline on his own power, just maybe a little uh, banged up right there on that last play. Third down, three yards to go for the Rams. The refs rush in for something. Yeah. Garner in at quarterback. Hand off to Wilcox, stutter step, great penetration by the Tiger defense leading the way. That's number 40, Devontae Jackson, the junior out of Greensboro, Alabama. And West Alabama's defense stands strong, and they force the punting unit to come on for the Rams. Can't draw that up any better. He gets to him about maybe one or two yards in the backfield for a punting situation. Now let's see what we can do with it. Fuller on to punt, back to return for West Alabama. That'll be Darius Nelson. He'll stand at his own 10. St sun setting here in Livingston. Sky looks painted tonight here in Livingston as well. It's just a beautiful day for football. End over end punt. Fair catch called for by Nelson. He'll do that, and he'll come to rest at the three-yard line, maybe three and a half, as West Alabama will start near their own end zone. It'll be first down and 10. I expect to see Tucker Melton this, uh, this particular series, but uh, we'll see if Coach G has the same thought. They've kind of uh, shared some time tonight, but uh, we'll see how Coach G wants to do that. 10-20 remaining, Phillip, and, uh, you know, West Alabama's done a really good job on defense, and, and if, if West Alabama could get a score here and go up uh, – Go up to, you know, two scores. That would be phenomenal here on this long drive starting at their own three-yard line. That would sure give you some confidence going in the locker room for halftime. This is number five team in the country. Melton to throw. He wants to go here near side. Intended receiver. That's going to be Nelson. And that one will fall incomplete. Good coverage right there. Give a lot of credit to the defensive back, Andrew Pitts. Good coverage. Pitts had a little bit of a chance to catch it. It, 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 it scraped his fingertips, it looked like, but even if, even if he had caught that, I doubt he would have stayed in bounds with it. 10-14 remaining here in the half. Tigers lead by seven. It's Melton, signal caller for this series in the backfield. That's going to be Antonio Brown. Two wide receivers set near us. 
is going to be Nelson. Far side, that's going to be intended receiver is going to be Chris Benyon. Almost intercepted, thrown behind Benyon. It may have even been tipped at the line. That was just ill-advised. He had about three or four. There were three about three or four Rams-looking helmets in the area. It was tipped. It was either tipped at the line or it was tipped by number 11 for Angelo State. Um, and it fe luckily, it fell harmlessly to the ground, but it was close to being intercepted. Nalls in on the wide side. Here to the near side, that's going to be Darius Nelson, the redshirt freshman from Huffman High School. Melton. He'll step up. He'll change the play. He'll bring Brown to his right. Low snap. Hands off to Brown. Dances at the line of scrimmage across the five. He'll push his way out to about the seven-yard line, does Brown. Brown on the afternoon. Negative yards after a long loss earlier. But uh, the Rams hold on third down. It'll bring out the punting unit for West Alabama. Special teams for the Tigers. Trace Sullivan on to punt. He's punted three times today. He's averaging 42 yards per as long as 45, and he's pinned him inside the 20 on two occasions. Pitts stands at midfield. Good snap. High arching spiral fielded at the Tiger 49 by Pitts, and Angelo State will take over. They'll have it inside Tiger territory just across midfield here with 9.20 to go in the half. We'll take a short break. On Flow Sports and your station for Tiger football, slyrock.com. Garner flips it to the man in motion. That's going to be Bradford. He tries to go left side, and he'll be forced out of bounds after he gets across the 45-yard line. There's a flag now on the far side of the field, about the 40, the Tiger 43, 47, excuse me. I'm we'll, wondering if we'll, that just fell out of the official's pocket. It's going to be a holding against the right. offense. That'll go against Angelo State. This has been a, uh, you know. A, kind of a sloppy ball game almost. I don't, I don't know if it's, it's necessarily sloppy, but there has been just some, I mean, there's only been four penalties in the game overall, but it's just been odd penalties at times. But uh, West Alabama is a recipient of that one. And it'll bring up uh, first down and very long as Angelo State has backed it back into their own territory. Garner to throw, wants to go across on the slant, reaching back. I believe that is Albert Thomas the fourth. Oh, West Alabama just brought the pressure hard right there. Um, that was Trevin Stanford, got some good pressure on the quarterback, drills him as he gets ready to throw it. And um, the ball, he has to rush that ball out. That's a good job right there is, is of getting rid of it. And a good job defensively for West Alabama. Second down and long. Angelo State works from their own 46. Fakes the handoff, wants to go across the middle, tipped at the line. That one's going to be hauled in by the wide receiver. I believe that's Rido. About a Zor Zorhan Rido. About a 14-yard gain for him. Third down and two as Angelo State back in Tiger territory. They work from the Tiger 40. Time to, to crank up some of that Tiger defense. Hand off to Phillips. Dances. Hit right there by Trayvon Stanford. We'll see where the spot, but it, he may be just shy 
of the first down marker. I think he's going to be a yard short. Great job by Trayvon Stanford, the red shirt senior transfer from UT Chattanooga. They're getting ready to go for it. They're going to bring in their Wildcat quarterback. That's number 15, Chad Ferry, 6'2", 185, sophomore from Lubbock, Texas. Ferry's on the afternoon. He's had three carries for 29 yards, and it's fourth and short here for the Rams. Ferry's on the There's keeper, flag. flag on the play. That's a, that's a false start. Dead ball. There it is. Sure. False start, says Brian Detweiler, the head official. That one will go against Angelo State, and I fully in anticipate seeing Cade Fuller come back on again. Fourth down and six. Fuller on to punt. Three punts on the afternoon. As long as 39, he averages 34. Darius Nelson, he'll put his heels on his own 10-yard line. 7.06 remaining in the first half. Tigers lead by seven by a score of 14 to seven. Yeah, I'm curious to see how UWA brings out the quarterback this drive coming up. End over end. Nelson calls for a fair catch, steps up. That one hits at the two, goes into the end zone. So West Alabama lets that one go into the end zone. They'll get a, get a chance to start this drive. 6.51. 14 to 7 your score in West Alabama on the afternoon. Looking across the stats, 49 yards of total offense for West Alabama, 118 for Angelo State. Tucker Melton, 2 of 7 for 25. Looks like Spencer Arcano is coming out. Yes, yes, that's Spencer Arsino back out at quarterback this drive. All right, we've got Arsino in. Two wide receivers to the top side. It'll be Antonio Brown to his right. Caleb Bass in at tight end. First and 10 from their own 20 is West Alabama. Arsenault keeps it, goes right side, tries to get around the end, gets across the 30. Excuse me, the 20. He's upended, and I'm afraid Arsenault may have coughed up the football. There's a scrum right there across the way. We're waiting for the official signal. Well, line judge seems to have called it already for Angelo. He just... Arsenal hat. Angelo State will be the recipient of the turnover. There's a player down for Angelo State. And he's slumped over. He, he he looked like he got caught off at the crunch at the bottom of that pile for the fumble. Yeah, and it's one of those deals too. It, you you get kind of tangled up in that melee, and then on top of it, you know, the temperatures have have run pretty high here this week. Down on the field, even though the sun's setting, I'm sure uh, that uh, that plays somewhat of a factor. But West Alabama turns it over here with 6.39 remaining in the first half. And an unfortunate turnover as West Alabama held on a, you know, a fourth down play. It wasn't even any, it wasn't anything that Arsenal really did. It's just Angelo State did a good job of getting the ball out. It was just a helmet on a ball in his arm while he was running. It's really yeah, you're supposed to hold on to the ball, but it wasn't like it was Arsenal being ir irresponsible with it, reckless with it. it. It's just a play that happens in football. It's That's a good. It's way. a good defensive play by Angelo State. So Garner will bring him out. It'll be a four wide receiver set. He's got Wilcox there. Hand off to Wilcox and nothing doing. Yeah, Folks, all. Travarius Hatcher is a man on a mission tonight. He gets there in a. Quick, fast, and in a hurry, it'll be a loss of about three yards. And Hatcher, I'm telling you what, he's uh, if this is any indication of what we're going to see from him this year, the Colin Community College transfer, I'm I'm digging it. He is, he is fast, and he's shooting gaps. Second down and 13. Angelo throws to Wilcox out of the backfield. Tackled made by number eight for West Alabama. That's going to be Uriah Ratliff. The sun, sun is setting, really set here in uh, Tiger Stadium. I'm going to try to figure out which way we want to do the lights. I've never had to deal with the glare from the from the 
from the window before because the windows have always come up, but uh, we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Garner in at quarterback. Nobody in the backfield. Goes across the middle. Intended receiver in and out of the hands. That's number 19, Hunter Wallace, so. as he took a slant right across the middle. And that falls incomplete. Good, uh, good coverage by West Alabama. Very good coverage. Just again, besides for a few certain plays tonight, this is these defenses have been so stout. I mean, how many turnovers have we had? About four or five. Um, Cade Fuller, he will come in to attempt the field goal. Into hold. Excuse me, Fuller into hold doing the kicking is Bradley Larson. My apologies. Larson from the right hash. Good snap, good hold. Kicks up, and it'll get through there. The Rams tack on three more. So West Alabama with a four-point lead, 14-10 to 10 here with 5-14. As Larson is able to get it to go through, we'll take a quick break here on Flow Sports and your station for Tiger Football, SlyRock.com. Stadium 5-14 remaining in the first half. Tigers lead it 14-10 over the number five ranked Angelo State Rams. To kick it off will be Bradley Larson. Back deep to return for West Alabama will be Nelson and company. As the sun sets in Livingston, that's one of the things the, the, um, the stadium feels. I don't know that it is, but sometimes it feels a little dark. Uh, I know that we're behind a tinted window, so that, that probably adds to it as Larson low line drive. That one's going to go out of bounds. And you're not wrong about Tiger Stadium feeling a little dark after hours. I mean, um, every night game I've been I've been to here, and I've been coming to football games since I was a little boy back in A wee little lad. A wee little lad puttering around Livingston, Alabama as a seven, eight-year-old. Just randomly walked into the student section one day, had one guy scream at me, are you going to go here one day? I say yes, and here we are. But um, every game I've been to here, it's always looked like this, always been dark. It, it looks, besides for the turf and the uniforms, it looks the same tonight as it did about 10 well, years ago. Well, you know, they, they haven't actually, the, the, the lighting here is relatively new. I, I, you know, I, it, yeah. it, it's, uh, it's, it's relatively new here in the stadium. So there was a lot of day games early on as, Looks like it's going to be Melton back in at quarterback. Hands off to Brown, left side. Breaks a tackle. Tries to break another. He's going to pick up five yards on the play as he gets it out into the 40-yard line. Gives some credit to the guys up front. Gave him a little bit of running room. Gets, lets him chip away at that negative percentage right now. Um, ben Newton, 6'4", 278. Thomasville native. He's doing some work up front as West Alabama's looking at a second down and five. Melton from the gun. Hands off to Brown. Dances around. Brown across the 40. Dives out to the 44-yard line. He's going to be just shy of the first down marker, but a good second down run for the Tigers. And so they're going to be looking at a third down and short. And what are you talking about earlier about the lighting? I believe it's just the Mel lighting is a dude. Melton hands off to Brown. Brown's going to get a Tiger first down. Yeah. Yes, sir. So Antonio Brown. That's his sixth carry of the afternoon. They move the chains, and the Tiger fans, they are, uh, they're feeling a little bit now. We can, uh, we can see them standing in, in appreciation of what the Tigers are doing here. First down and 10, Tigers work from their own 46. Just under four minutes to play. Tucker Melton in the gun with Brown to his left. Hands off to Brown. Great job right there by Angelo State. Holy smokes. Coming yeah, out of the backfield, that was Kahari Watson, 200-pound senior from Keller, Texas, a flash just into the backfield as he was there in a hurry. 
It looks like he got. The, it looked like he got in the backfield as soon as the play started. I mean, um, he is that. Abs- that young man is quick. Everyone on Angelo State is quick. Second down, and about fifteen. Tucker Melton. He'll deploy three wide receivers here to the near side. That's going to be Nelson. And I believe that is Bry Webb as, as well. No, it was Nelson and John Hilbert. A loss of a yard on the play is good pressure up front by Angelo State. We really appreciate you tuning in on Flow Sports and watching the Gulf South Conference and Lone Star Conference battle tonight. For the folks tuning in on SlyRock.com or the SlyRock app, we appreciate that as well. Three wide receivers. It'll be Nelson here to the near near side. Hilbert Nolls on the top side. Antonio Brown to the left of Melton. Third down and long. Tigers work from their own 39-yard line. Melton surveys the scene, throws downfield. Ed Ball is going to be intercepted. That one's going to be picked off by Kaysen McCullough Cooper, underthrown ball, intended receiver for West Alabama was Darius Knowles, and Melton just didn't put enough on it. And the turnover for Angelo State there with 215 as the Tigers lead it by 414 to 10. And Darius Knowles was wide open. There wasn't anyone within five yards of him. But a ball just underthrown, not enough bus runner, whatever terminology you want to say to it. Um, just underthrown, and that's what happens. Yeah, it just uh, it, I, it, I'm, it came out of his hand, maybe uh, just not quite the way he wanted. Not enough arm behind it, but almost uh, like it came out early. But uh, it's it's one of those things. Uh, those are going to happen from time to time. First down and ten for the Rams. Good pressure by West Alabama. Dancing around is Gardner. He's trying to get people to move downfield, making his way open as a wide receiver. And that's going to be a first down and then some. Catching that one is Kel Williams. Garner scrambled. He came to his right, and Williams came back for the football and was able to get it all the way down to the West Alabama. That's going to be the 28-yard line, so a big gain for the Rams. Checking in for West Alabama will be Travorius Hatcher. The officials... I see the hands waving there. Screaming about something. The officials are going to talk it over. I think they're all squared away. A buck 41. Remaining in the first half, 14-10, your score. Garner will be in at quarterback. Surveys the scene. Pressure by West Alabama. Leading the charge was no Devontae Jackson. Uh, finally, an incomplete call, but there was no whistle blown down the field. And yeah, that was that was kind of bizarre, yeah, as it was might have bounced off e- his foot easily on the turf. But uh, the only thing I could just, only thing I could think of is that one of the rest thought it may have bounced off his foot. UWA's turned up the pressure on um, turned up the pressure on old Gerald Gardner. And they bring in, yeah, they bring in their Wildcat quarterback for this situation. Yeah, that's going to be Ferries. That's Chad Ferries. He'll come in, second down and ten. He'll throw out of the backfield. Phillips. He'll connect with Phillips. Wrestled to the ground is Phillips, on the stop for West Alabama. That's going to be Jamarcus Smith, the senior from Tupelo, Mississippi. Positive gain there, about, uh, we'll call it seven, maybe eight yards on the play for the Rams. Third down and short. You know, they've called Phillips' number a lot tonight. I mean, he's one of their horses, and they got faith in that horse. Phillips has carried the ball nine times. Fakes the handoff to Phillips, keeping it. Will be Ferries, and Ferries has nothing going on. As it's a gang tackle, I would, leading the charge right there, I think that was Trayvon Stanford. As he gets there in a hurry, check again for the Tigers will be number 33. That's going to be Trayvon Nunn, the 
Mobile native. Angela State's going to take a timeout to assess their options here. I would not be surprised if they call if they try to go for some sort of hard count or something, draw UWA off sides. It's only fourth and about three. They want the timeout. We'll take a quick one. Your station, Tiger Football, Slyrock.com, and Flow Sports. Forty-five seconds to go here in the first half. Tigers lead it, fourteen to ten. West Alabama on the afternoon, fifty-nine total yards of offense. They've given up one sixty-nine. Tucker Melton, two of eight for twenty-five. Five different ball carriers for West Alabama. Sixteen rushes on the ground. Twenty-one yards for Arsenault. His long was twenty-seven. Brian Webb, three carries for fourteen. As I'm curious, Angelo State looks like they're going to line up left hash it seems for that, the field goal attempt. Seems that UWA just called a timeout as well. We'll keep it here. Looking at the looking at the stats here, Arsenault Spencer Arsenault three carries for 21. Bry Webb three carries for 14. Antonio Brown four carries for seven. And then Tucker Melton's got a carry for a yard. And Darius Nelson, two carries for minus six. Now, receiving for West Alabama, two catches tonight. Uh, Nelson's got one. Caleb Bass has got one. And they've really spread it around for Angelo State. Seven different receivers have gotten into the mix. And crazy enough, Philip, none of them have caught more than two passes. Uh, Wilcox out of the backfield has caught two for 25. And then with one, Kel Williams, Kyle Bradford, Zoran Rido, Rasheen Greed, Kaysen Phillips. And then uh, number 85, they don't have that full name here. We'll look at that one. That's Albert Thomas the fourth, as West Alabama comes out of the timeout. In to do the kicking will be Bradley Larson. 5'8", 175, Junior from Prosper, Texas. He'll kick from the left hash. See if they don't do something right here. I have, I just get this weird feeling in my gut about it. 45 seconds. Let's see the good snap and a good hold. It's blocked. That one's blocked. West Alabama blocked the attempt. And that's a huge special teams play. There's a flag down. They're going to say something about roughing the snapper. Is there going to be a flag for rough in the long snapper? Because he got clobbered on that play. The officials talk it over at about the 21. Number one for us looks like he knows he did something. Okay. Darius Nellis. There's two flags down the field. Yep, that's, that's on Livingston. The penalty, the penalty will negate the block and will give the Rams a fresh set of downs here. So now they'll have it first down and 10 from the West Alabama 16. 40 seconds left in the half. Garner. To throw. Wants to go across the middle. Intended receiver. He'll turn around. We'll tell you his number. I believe that to be Kel Williams. That one will fall incomplete. That's a, that was another flag in this game. And Earlier I said the game was sloppy. And that may just not be true. That may just, I may just be mistaken there. And this has been a very defensive focused game. And a lot of these are offensive penalties that are happening. Both of these defenses have been very, very, very stingy. And uh, 
you know, we we anticipated two pretty solid defensive uh, be defensive performances, and it's been all that we wanted here in the first half. Garner back to throw. Wants to go across the middle. He wants to go to Wilcox. And West Alabama, that's going to be number one. Artavius Washington, he puts his hands on it for the second time of the afternoon, and he will come away with the INT in the end zone. And West Alabama, I'll tell you what, uh, when they've needed to step up, they've definitely stepped up, and they will take the ball back, and they'll have it first down and 10 from that's, their own 20-yard line. And you check the live stats here in a second, but by my count, that's, inter, that's turnover number six for total in the ball game. Again, the defensive battle, a lot of turnovers today. West Alabama's had two. Um, I want to say this is maybe this is either Angeles State's like third or fourth. West Alabama, it'll be Melton. He'll hand it off. Positive yardage play right there. A little uh, skirmish as number four gets in on the tackle. They say number four. That's not really possible. I think it was a wrinkled jersey. I was listening to Jason. But uh, that will do it for the first half of play. And after two full quarters, one half of play, the Tigers lead it at the half, 14 to 10. On Flow Sports and your station for Tiger Football, Slyrock.com. Alabama leads it 14 to 10 over the number five Rams of Angelo State. Looking at the first half stats, West Alabama 61 total yards of offense, 36 on the ground, 25 in the air. As Tucker Melton's thrown two of eight for 25 yards, he's thrown a pick. Three carries for Spencer Arsenault for 21 yards. Three carries for Bry Webb, 14. Eight rushes for Antonio Brown. He's in the plus category. He's got six yards. Melton with a carry. 
And Darius Nelson, two carries for minus six. Receiving for West Alabama, Nelson with a catch for 16 yards. And Caleb Bass, one catch for nine yards. Looking at first downs, West Alabama, five first downs in that first half. Two of six on third down. 25 total plays. They've played 11 fewer plays from scrimmage than Angelo State. West Alabama averaging just 2.4 yards per play. And they have held the football for 12 minutes, 41 seconds. Turnovers, three for each team. And fumbles lost, one of one for Angelo State, two of two for the Tigers. So looking at the scoring summary in the first half, West Alabama gave up the 23-yard touchdown run by Angelo State's Chad Ferries, kind of their Wildcat quarterback. Larson came in, connected on the PAT, made it 7 to nothing. That was at the 8.50 mark of the first quarter. At the 250, 2.56 mark of the first quarter, West Alabama answered with a Spencer Arsenault 27-yard touchdown run. Kevin Butchers tacked on the extra point knotted it up at seven and then West Alabama early in the second half at the 12.53 mark Trayvon Nunn he was able to pick up the fumble take it in from just a couple of yards out Butchers knocks it in gave West Alabama the 14 to 7 lead and then at the 5.14 mark there in the second quarter Bradley Larson knocks in a 30 yarder from the left hash cut the West Alabama lead to 14 to 10 and that's where we are here as we're about 15 minutes to go in this half we're going to take a we're going to take a break we're going to work out some uh, technical issues we're having here but uh, continue to watch on Flow Sports and listen on slyrock.com The stats for Angelo State. Angelo State, 169 yards of total offense, 126 in the air. 43 on the ground, four penalties for 36 yards, eight first downs, one of nine on third down. 36 total plays from scrimmage, 4.7 yards per play. Their average yards per completion, 15.8. 
And Gerald Garner, he's thrown seven of 16, 118 yards, two picks. Chad Ferry's one of one for eight yards. Four, make it five different ball carriers for the Rams. Chad Ferry's four carries, 28 yards. Nine carries for Case and Phillips for 28. Braden Fuller's got a carry, minus one. Everybody's in the minuses from here on out. It'll be Braden Wilcox, four carries, minus four. And Gardner, his one carry, a loss of eight. Now, they've spread it around to seven different receivers and none with more than two catches. Braden Wilcox out of the backfield with two catches for 25. And then Kel Williams, Kyle Bradford, Zorhan Rideau, Rasheen Green, Kaysen Phillips, and Albert Thomas IV, as well as Alfred Greer, each with a catch. So, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where they've got a lot of different weapons, but really the tail of the tape here in the first half has been the defense. Uh, West Alabama's Jamarcus Smith leads the way in total tackles. Well, tied for the lead. Uh, Smith, Stanford, and Devonche Bryant, each with four tackles. And West Alabama's tackles for a loss have come from Trayvon Stanford. He's been a man on a mission. Let's not forget the... The, the absolute uh, the being in the right place and playing great defense, Artavius Washington, two, count them, two interceptions, leading the defensive uh, attack for Angelo State, Kiari Watson with four tackles, as is Eric Rasco. Now, Rasco, I haven't called out his name, but uh, he was listed the preseason defensive player to watch in the Lone Star Conference, so he's definitely living up to his billing we're going to take a two-minute break we're still trying to sort out some uh, technical issues here but we'll take a two-minute break your station flow sports and slyrock.com Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. 14-10 your score and we're trying to we're trying to resolve some uh, technical situation here. The 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 new challenge that we have encountered is we're trying to get our our crowd mic so that we can get some kind of uh, stadium ambient noise and crowd noise and that kind of thing and uh, it's just not wanting to cooperate with us but we'll uh, we'll work on that for the future broadcast, and we should be able to get that to you. But, uh, you know, quite a bit going on on campus uh, this weekend. Men's and women's soccer playing this weekend. The men played today. I have not seen a score, but they played at Carson Newman. Well, excuse me, they were playing Carson Newman um, in Vestavia Hills today. And then 
on Saturday, the men will host North Georgia. That one uh, should get started at about 4 o'clock here in Tiger Stadium. Now tomorrow, the women's soccer team, they will, uh, they have traveled to Tusculum. They'll be playing there in Greenville, Tennessee. That one will kick off at 11 o'clock Central Time. And then on Sunday, they will host Clayton State here in Tiger Stadium. So, you know, if you're, uh, if you're a soccer fan, it, it's a good time to watch. Uh, you know, both of those teams are, you know, uh, fun to watch. And I'm, I'm hopeful that they will get their seasons off to a good start here in this first week of the 23 soccer season and you know heck before you know it basketball season will be here and you know it just it's amazing how quickly that can uh can get here and kind of surprise you so to speak we'll be doing a lot of things over the course of the the season there's a lot of exciting stuff happening with the soccer program too we got a brand new stadium being built on top of the old Absolutely. football practice facility um both soccer teams did really well last year, too. Made the conference tournament. Um, we're expo both ready to go pretty far, both of them. Uh, I expect a big year out of both men's and women's soccer again. I think it'll be fun to watch. And you, you mentioned the the new stadium. That is going to be phenomenal. I'm uh, so excited. That's for soccer and track specifically. You know, I mean, because we've never had, I mean, although we have a track program, we've never had our own track. And, you know, if you're familiar with campus, right, right near the, the sub where the the old football practice facility used to be they have leveled it out they they're putting in a brand new uh natural surface uh soccer field now it will be like we have regulation soccer dimensions in tiger stadium but is it, it's on the small side it's um, on the small side i mean sorry to interrupt you but um like last year when I was doing cam like last fall I was doing cameras and stuff with you. That's when I got stung by that dang wasp in here. <laughs> you, you remember that? I got stung by that. I was, I can tell y'all folks. I was uh, I was walk walking with the camera and I thought it was just a sweat bee. He was telling Will right here was telling me to get away from. Him. I said, "Hey, it's not gonna bite me. It's nothing." It stung me and I was holding the rest of the game holding my elbow. <laughs> but um, no, I mean we have regulation sizes on here, but the issue with the black line is that the black line on the far side of the field, um. It, it ends where the where the turf ends. Yeah, it, it absolutely does. I mean, it, it goes right to the edge of the, the playing surface. So, but that's what's going to be so awesome about the new uh, facility for soccer is is it going to be, you know, soccer specific, but it's also going to include uh, a full track, you know, and that's um, that's going to really elevate not only um, you know the two soccer programs, but the, having a place where you can practice your you know, track events and potentially host events, I think will be huge for, uh, you know, the Tiger program. And, you know, that's that's just an exciting time. And that really shows the commitment to what West Alabama, you know, we were talking to uh, Representative Scott Stahagen earlier. And, you know, he's talking about all the differences that, uh, you know, he's noticed since the time he was here. And, you know, I, I think that he's right on the money, and it just uh, it, it really shows what West Alabama is is committed to doing. And you know, talking about being committed, I mean, this is a a his, history of football that goes back to the 1930s, 1938 to be exact. And you know, they've got a national championship under their belt back in the 70s. Um, you know, well, and a, and they've made six NCAA playoff appearances. I mean, West Alabama. There's been a few. There's been a few rough years on it with the program and the time, but the last I want to say 20 years almost, really, ever since Coach Wallace got here originally in the noughties, it's been a completely different ball game over here. I've I've been coming to West Alabama football games since I was about, like I said earlier today, seven or eight. First ball game I ever came to was 2007 versus Harding at home. There you go. Um. My dad, I, at the time, I just really learned what football was. I was really excited to hear about it. My dad mentioned he played college football. <laughs> I thought I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Because at the time, you're seven. You think all college football is the same. You don't understand the difference between West Alabama and Ohio State, you know? It's it's all big time. It's all know? big time. So, 
I, and I've been coming to games here. I don't think there's been a season where I didn't come to a ball game since that year. And I've watched this program. I've been coming to baseball games to all this stuff, too. Um, I've watched this program come from the ground up almost, basically. I'll tell you, they've done a great job. We're about two minutes away from the start of the second half. We're going to take a two-minute break. Your station for Tiger football. It's Flow Sports and Slyrock.com. And then we will have Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. We're about ready to get the second half underway and trying to figure out uh, the best way to, to tackle some of the, the uh, challenges of being behind the glass. <laughs> the chair just about tackled me. Got, <laughs> got my wire caught up on it. <laughs> um, but the glass here at the stadium now, since we can't, we can't move it up or down, um, and it's tinted. It's got such a bad glare. I can see more of the wall behind me. Well, I'm going to turn field. the light off, which makes it easier to see the field, but it makes it very difficult to see uh, my my rosters here. But we'll, I can, I can, uh, we'll we'll make do. We'll make do. If if nothing else, I mean, I have been very. Uh, Flexible at times over the year. I've broadcast from a lot of different places as West Alabama gets ready to kick it away. That will be fielded at the one-yard line. And it looked like he was going to bring it back, and I guess the official indicated that he called fair catch. Yeah, it looks like he was calling a touchback. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, the only way I could see it being a touchback it was his foot in the end zone there? Yeah, let's check the video, but I believe it was. That's probably what happened. Is that his foot was in the end zone and it was a touchback? Because I, I don't I'm about to say if he called failure catch, started running with it, that's a penalty. I think he must have. Uh, I'm a, he must have been a step in the end zone there. But we'll. Uh, I believe his back foot was. We'll, we'll call it. Uh, we'll call it a touchback there. First down and ten. Angelo State will take over from their own 25. Garner. He'll be in at quarterback. Is that an official timeout or is that? Yeah, that's an official timeout. I'm checking something. Oh, uh, the clock. Clock needs to be at 15. Is it 14, 50, 40, 56? We'll get that squared away. Let's see what they do here. Angelo State, first down and 10. They work from their own 25. Fakes the handoff, connects with the wide receiver there on the right side. 
And he's going to get enough for a Rams first down as he gets it all the way across the 45-yard line. So a 20-yard gain on the play for Angelo State. Tigers lead it by 4, 14 to 10. One thing I've noticed tonight with Angelo State, and truthfully the whole ball game, there's, there's been a few big plays. A lot of these yards are just, just coming off of um, it's like these
terms of total offense for the folks from San Angelo, Texas. First down and 10 from the Tiger 43. Garner wants to throw out of the backfield. It's Wilcox makes a circus catch. He'll be pulled down and loses his balance at about the 39-yard line of, excuse me, 41-yard line of West Alabama. And so far tonight for Angelo State, it's not like, it, obviously they don't have any issues moving the ball. It's just they're not really scoring. Either the defense is bowing up when it needs to, and they're getting these either three and outs or they're forcing to kick field goals. And Turnovers have been a factor as well for both yes, of sir. these teams. About what, what are we, six, seven at? Are we at six or seven six, tonight? Six total, three each. They want to make it academic and make sure everybody's uh, even Steven there. 3.0, that's a good GPA. Second down, pressure for West Alabama. Garner gets rid of it. He throws Sheesh. behind the receiver, but he's able to twist his body in and around. I think that's Zorhan Rido. Zorhan Rido, that's an appropriate name. That man had a contortionist catch. Well, I tell you what, and he was a, he's a, he's a preseason offensive player to watch in the Lone Star, and I can definitely see why as there is a Tiger shaking up on the play. Number 84, that would be. Well, that might be Cole McDowell. Could, that could be 85. Is that Gaten Rila? Is it 84 or 85? His jersey's scrunched up. I think it's number 84. Yeah, I, bl I believe that's number 84, Gaten Rila, the tight end out of Pelham. Yeah. But it'll be a first down. Oh, that's not number 84. That's number 94. The 94, that's Cody Sigler. Cody He's wearing Sigler. one of those brand new Rydell Axiom helmets. Um, they look like a motorcycle helmet. Throwing off his back foot is Garner. Good pressure by the Tiger defense as they got there in a hurry. An update on him, it doesn't seem that he's hurt. It seems that his helmet's broken, so they're just working on that for him. Definitely like to get that squared away. Right. Second down and 10. Angelo State from the Tiger 24. Back to throw is Garner. Pressure. Flushes him out to the right side. He Flex wants some run. help. And he's still running. Tripped up at the 20-yard line. Looks like there's gonna there's a flag thrown on this play. You know, he has another player down. 30. I want it. It's number 38 or 36. Jersey Strikes. Well, we down. won't speculate. Uh, we don't want folks to, to get... Uh, frustrated with the the inability to see those numbers from across the way but it looks like he's up on his feet he's up there was a uh, there was a penalty on Angela's state I believe it was a hold Michael Sharpley looks to be making his way oh. here to the sideline there's a and also I was I was looking at the guy across the way Hudson, Hudson, up. Hudson Burns is checking on someone else. That'd be number 11. Um, that'd be DeMario, DeMario Nichols. Nichols. So Mario Nichols. He just. It, the way he looks right there, that almost looks like, I, I don't want to speculate, but it almost looks like, you know, when your, your lower leg just cramps up, it just absolutely kind of uh, looks locked up on him a little bit there. Well, when I when I noticed him, I, w I was looking at the official giving the penalty. I look over to the left, and he's just crumpled down the field. So I'm thinking he may just have some sort of massive cramp going on. Sack it down and long for the Rams. Garner to throw. He wants to go toward the end zone. Wobbly, spirally, he's got a man in the end zone, and the Rams are going to get in there. For a touchdown, he's going to hook up with Zorhan Rido. 34-yard strike right there as West Alabama had good pressure. But Rido was able to get separation from the defender. Gets in for the Rams score. The Rams lead it 16-14. to 14. It wasn't, I mean, it was, a, it was an impressive play. The, the ball's delivery wasn't that amazing, but... He was there when they needed it. We UWA sold out on the pressure, it seemed. Bradley Larson 
in to attempt the PAT, and that one's going to get through there. 6.40. Three-point game, 6.40 in the third quarter. 17-14. to 14. We will take a break on here on Flow Sports. You're watching Flow Sports and listening on SlyRock.com. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. 6.40 to go in the third. Tigers trail 17 to 14. As Angelo State was able to get in from 34 yards out. Gerald Garner hooked up with Zorhan Rideau. Play took, uh, the drive took five plays, 56 yards, two minutes, 20 seconds. As the Rams get ready to kick it away. End over end. Little low screamer kick right there. That one's going to get out of bounds. Flags come on. So West Alabama will be the recipient of the kick out of bounds. Their time of possession belongs to Angelo State 24-24 as opposed to 13-56 for West Alabama. 294 yards of total offense for Angelo State. 62 for West Alabama. 25 in the air, 37 on the ground. Tucker Melton, 2 of 9. As it looks like Tucker, Tucker will bring him back out. Nelson Hilbert. Nelson Hilbert and Walker will be the wide receivers. Melton from the gun. Wants to throw across the middle. Got him. Pass complete. It's going to be about a six-yard gain as he gets... The hookup right there with the wide receiver, John Hilbert. So positive play there on first down. Gains them gains about six yards on the play. So second down and four for West Alabama. They work from their own 40. Hand off to Brown. Brown gets back to the point of attack. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third down. It's so bizarre, Philip, that, uh, you know, we're so enclosed into the booth. It you know, we don't hear anything, uh, and, and we apologize for that. We'll get that sorted out uh, before the next game. But, uh, you know, really odd just kind of being in here and not getting in the, uh, that ambient noise. It just feels unnatural for Tiger Stadium. Third down, trips to the near side. Melton wants to go far side. He's got a man one-on-one. -on -one. But good coverage, intended receiver. That was Darius Knowles. They had forced Knowles out of bounds pretty early on to his route, and he wasn't able to recover from it. So That'll be a three and out for West Alabama. Trey Sullivan to come on to punt. I'm curious to see if UWA doesn't try to see if they can't get um, Angela State here to jump off sides. It's only four yards, but... I guess you could just play it safe, play your cards right, and take a punt on it down here. 
A good snap. Running. Wobbly spiral. That hits at the 30 and pops out of bounds. It'll probably be marked at about the 28, 29 yard line. So Angelo State will take over first down and 10. Angelo State leads it by a 3 17 14. We got 5 20 and Philip, you ask me about Jefferson Country Store. Betsy Compton is a is a is a huge listener of West Alabama football. And way back when I went in and Mr. Tony Luker, uh, I couldn't decide between two different sandwiches. It was, it was the hamburger or the fried bologna. So I asked him, I said, I would like a hamburger all the way, no onions, add fried bologna. He said, yes, sir, I've never made that before but it sounds delicious, I'll put it on the menu. What do you want to call it? And I said, let's call it the Coach's Burger. Oh Hence, the goodness. Coach's Burger. Garner rolls out to his right, a lot of pressure by West Alabama, and he'll have to throw that one over into his own sideline. It'll bring up second down. So if you go to the Jefferson Country Store and you decide to get the Coach's Burger, I tell you it is phenomenal, and I have the phenomenal and fantastic privilege of being able to have ordered it first and named it. I mean, the Jefferson, <laughs> Country, the Jefferson Country Store is one of those places that just feels special when you go into it. It is know? special. It, it is the best place to get lunch in the surrounding area in the four, in a 40 minute radius. Second down and 10. Pressure. Garner steps up into the pocket, wants to throw. Intended receiver in the middle of the field just couldn't hook up with him. I believe that was, looked like number 19, Hunter Wallace. Yes, sir. Hunter's had a, had a couple of catches tonight for 29 yards. His long was 16, but West Alabama credit the defense. They put pressure on Garner. He kind of stepped up, avoided the uh, avoided the hit, and just uh, couldn't make that throw. So West Alabama looking at a third down and 10, and it looks like on the field West Alabama had number seven. That's Trayvon Stanford, who has had a solid, I mean an absolute solid night just all of a sudden threw his hands up and sat down. So we'll watch to see if it looks like he's Hudson, holding his hands Hudson Burns checks on him. He was standing upright and then it literally all of a sudden he threw both of his hands up and sat down. He's he's holding his hamstrings. I think he's just he's 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 cramped. It's it's so hot. It's so humid down there tonight. I it, mean, it, it I, will definitely take its toll. That's for sure. I mean, it was – that feels like temperature down that field. I've worked down on that field during the ball games before. Even if it's – even if it's nighttime like this, a day, I mean, it's what, 85 degrees out there at night, that turf's going to make it hotter. Oh, it's hot. And, you know, you know, I, I, I said that, you know, we have folks that typically listen, and, and they're, they're, they were probably watching another high school game because they've got friends and family there. This is the dedication, okay? Miss Betsy Compton, she's watching the DMOP game and listening to us. She in the you? stands, she, she is locked in, so I, I, we appreciate it. We love the folks that are tuned in on Flow Sports as well, uh, as we're able to get that out uh, to a lot of folks all over the country and anybody that has uh, Internet access in the free world, sign up for it. It's fantastic. Gardner wants to go downfield. He's got a man open. He's going to connect at the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5, and Angelo State with a huge strike. From their own 29-yard line, they're going to get in there for an in, uh, in, into the end zone for a touchdown. Garner, I mean, he just dropped back and unloaded a deep ball and was able to find the wide receiver. That is Kyle Bradford. He had two steps on his man, and when Bradford had it, the only thing that if you're a Tiger fan, you're wondering if he's going to trip over the 20. He did not. He goes in untouched, 23-14 your score with was, the PAT forthcoming. I just looked at it almost too easy. That's a good snap and a good hold. Larson knocks it through, extends the Rams lead 24-14. We'll take a break. Flow Sports in your station for Tiger football, slyrock.com.
Kickoff fielded at the five. He'll bring it across the 10-yard line, out to the 20 before he's pushed out of bounds. That would be um... West Alabama trails it by 10, 450 to go in this third quarter. And with that last play by Angelo State, I mean, there's a reason they're ranked number five in the country coming in. I mean, this this isn't insurmountable. It's a 10-point deficit with another quarter and about some change to go. We're um, back in Tiger Stadium. West Alabama was able to bring the kickoff out to about the 21-yard line. They rush to the football. Looks like Arsenault is going to be back in for the Tigers. The line judge here on the side comes in frantically. It looks like the Tigers are going to call a timeout. We'll keep it right here. The UWA got up to the line of scrimmage real fast. They wanted to do something right out of the gate. But I'm guessing Coach Gillen didn't like what he saw because he called a timeout almost immediately. I love the fact that Coach G wears – a different color hat from his entire staff. He usually has on a white hat, uh, so he's a little bit easier to find at times. And, uh, you know, today, earlier in that first half, it was just that white blur going through there because he, uh, he was fired up, and he was moving pretty good right there as well. As West Alabama will come out of the timeout, it'll be first down and 10 from their own 21. 4.50 to go here in the third. Arsenault's still in at quarterback. Arsenault's in. That may be, is that Kilpatrick in the backfield with him? He's out there blocking in front. Arsenault to the left side. And Arsenault just eats it right there. And he got swarmed. A different look right there for West Alabama. I thought that was Kilpatrick. It is Hunter Kilpatrick, the junior from Florence, Alabama. Second down and 12, so a loss of two on the play. Two wide receivers here to the near side. That's going to be Hilbert and Walker. Arsenault unloads far side. Pass in and out of the hands of Darius Knowles. Mm, and yeah. that'll bring up third down and long. Knowles is lucky he didn't take a full step with that thing, too. Because that could have been another turnover for the game. Third down and 12. Walker and Hilbert here to the near side. It'll be Nall's top side. Arsenault moves his tight end into that kind of slot receiver position. Hands off, fakes the handoff to Kilpatrick. Arsenault keeps it, goes left side, crosses across the 20, steps out of the 22-yard line. So that'll bring up fourth down. For West Alabama, Trey Sullivan, he will be asked to punt it away one more time. Sullivan, six punts on the night. He's averaged 38.7, his long of 45. This will make punt number seven. Tigers have had difficulties moving the football as end over end kick. That one will hit at midfield. It'll hang a left, and they will mark it out at the midfield stripe. I'm looking at the red hat, Troy Maddox. He says we're going to keep rolling. We'll keep it right here. 3.24 to go in the third quarter. Tigers trail it by 10. As the officials get everything set and ready to go. Tucker Melton on the afternoon for the Tigers, 3 of 12 for 31 yards. Gail Gardner, 14 of 26, 280, two scores and two picks. <coughs> Gardner in at quarterback. Wilcox to his right. He'll deploy three wide receivers here to the near side. He's got one on the numbers, one on one on the top side. Gardner hands off to Wilcox. A little shaky exchange right there. Hold Does on. it look like it rolled up... Uh, Looked like it rolled up his shoulder right there, and then uh, he was able to corral it. They lose a yard. Credit the West Alabama defense. Just a whole lot of nothing right there. And uh, 
No, Wilcox has come come in a few times. He's had he's done sun damage, but it's basically been Phillips all night for Angela. Garner in at quarterback. Wilcox has three catches out of the backfield for 28. He's carried the ball six times for negative four. Garner wants to throw across the middle. He's going to hook up with his wide receiver. I believe that to be Wallace. And he'll be wrestled to the ground at the 43-yard line. Shy of the first down marker, it'll be third down at about three and a half yards. Just under two and a half minutes to go here in the third. Tigers trail 24-14. Garner in at quarterback. Wilcox to the right. Two wide receivers on the top side. He fakes the handoff to Wilcox. Boom! Ooh. Holy smokes. I can't tell. Right across the kind of a slant pattern on the right intended receiver that looked to be, let me look at this, that looked to be number 10, Kyle Bradford, and then out of the defensive backfield just upended Bradford. Ball falls incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down. So I was looking at the replay. You can't really tell. I can't tell if he was trying to make a play on the ball or if he was just hitting the receiver. I think it looked like he was trying to make a play on the ball, and he just ran through the receiver to do it. <laughs> uh, I don't think it was anything malicious. Back to return is Darius Knowles. Excuse me. Yeah, Darius Knowles. To return, he calls for a fair catch. It hits at the five special teams for Angelo State. will down that at the one. So West Alabama will have 99 yards to cover here on this drive with less than two minutes to go in this third stanza. 42-yard punt down at the West Alabama one. Tucker Melton in at quarterback. Nalls the lone wide receiver on the top side of the field. Melton looks to throw, wants to go near side. That's going to be to Walker, caught at the 12. Walker's got separation. He's cost the 20, the 30, the 40, the 50. He's across midfield. He's Hogtied and drugged down at the Angelo State 37-yard line. So West Alabama with a huge gain right there. Tucker Melton under pressure was able to get it into the hands of Tyler Walker, and he flips the field. So a great play from scrimmage for West Alabama. As he covers 62 yards, Tucker Melton in the gun. Hands off to Brown. Brown wants to take it up the middle. He's wrestled to the ground. It'll be a two-yard gain. And I'll tell you what, uh, the Tiger fans on their feet after the 62-yard strike by West Alabama. Walker was able to get away from his man at about the 20, and then it was just a foot race. Yeah. Uh, he, Walker was close to breaking that all the way, too. I mean, after it was time when he caught it, because there was nobody within about 30 yards of him, besides for this one defender, that's the only man he had to beat. Second down and eight. Melton wants to throw under pressure. Trying to go to Knowles. Overthrown. That one will be incomplete. It'll bring up third down. You want to know something? I'm glad that Angela State doesn't do, and I see a lot of these schools who wear yellow. Uh, I'm glad Angela State doesn't have either yellow cleats or players with yellow gloves because when you see that from a booth, Oh, Lord. Oh, I, I, I have been, uh, what's the word? I, I, I've been snipered more times than I can remember with with opponents. And so we, had a, we had a player a few years ago that wore yellow gloves. And uh, it, it just, you, you think it's a flag all the time. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't. But third down and eight, 44 ticks of the clock here to go in this third quarter. Tucker Melton, he'll put a man in motion. That's Hilbert. Melton stops. Drops, intended receiver Hilbert well over his head. It looked like the little mix-up on the route right there as that one will fall incomplete. And Hilbert, I, Hilbert broke a little early, it looked like to me. I feel like, from what I'm seeing, it looks like West Alabama is going to go for it here from the Angelo 35. 
Yeah, we're 45 yard line. Angela say we're basically this is four down territory. In the backfield, that's going to be Brown. Four wide receivers. Melton three step drop across the middle wants to go to the receiver, overthrown, intercepted by Angelo State. Just tackled it. by Caleb Bass on the interception. Anye Arupabo. I was hoping that I wouldn't have an opportunity to smash that one, but uh, Oranye Arupabo with a huge interception, a phenomenal uh, catch and return right there, and an unfortunate turnover for West Alabama, the fourth turnover of the night for the Tigers. So they decide to go for it on fourth down. And in all honesty, you know, Philip, if he had just batted that one down, they would have had another 10, 12, 12 yards. Yeah, it would so, be a better field so position. That, I mean, that actually, better on the that statue, actually works out if you're a Tiger fan. 30, 32 of. ticks left in this third quarter. Let's see what Angela State does now because they've wanted to. Op they've opened up the passing game last few drives. Gonna hand it off to Wilcox. Goes around right side. He's got a little running room Holy. across the 40, the 50. He's into Tiger territory. The 30, the 20, the 10. He'll go in untouched. Go in. What untouched. an explosive run that little, by Wilcox. That man can move. I mean, that was. Y'all heard me. Y'all heard me, folks. I went holy. I mean, that that kid. And he hasn't been he, – he's done Sundance tonight. He hasn't been the big, big threat for them. It's been Phillips all night. But Wilcox right there, he took a gap on the right side, and he rode it. And, oh, Bra he Bra could move. Braden Wilcox, 5'10", junior out of San Angelo, Texas. So he's a local guy. And when he had the corner, he's got another gear. And when I'm talking about he put on the afterburner, he was able to pick him up and put him down at a pretty fast rate. It was a – uh, a low snap there. Fuller was able to get it up, and Larson kicks it through on the extra point. I see Red Hat saying we want to keep rolling. We've got 18 ticks of the clock here in the third. Rams lead it 31 to 14 after a huge 77-yard run by Braden Wilcox. What an impressive run! I mean, uh, Wilcox, it's uh, he's he's got another gear, and and that's definitely a weapon that you want to be able to have if you're Angelo State. He's got seven carries for 73 yards, and that one was 77. So he got himself uh, out of the negatives there, and now he's averaging 10.4 per. So it's amazing. Uh, when math does its thing, it's pretty cool. 10.4 yards per carry It's just for Wilcox. If you're a Tiger fan, you, you're not very happy about the scoreboard right now, but you got to be impressed with Angela State's done. Last three drives have been explosive play, explosive play, explosive play, just taking the top off the Tiger defense. They, they are – Angela State is ranked number five for a reason. They are genuinely impressive. Big old moon rising over the field. Angelo kicks it away. It'll be fielded at the one. Brings it out across the 10, the 15, the stutter step at the 20. Wrestled to the ground at the 23-yard line. The officials are going to call a an injury timeout, a shaken up. Ram. Ram looks like number 28. That may be Walker Bauer. I think he got uh, tangled up there in the return. 31-14, your score. Angelo State on top. 449 yards of total offense for the Rams. 133 for the Tigers. Gerald Gardner, 15 of 28 for 288. Two scores and two picks. After the first quarter of play, it was knotted up 7-7. And then Angelo State outscored West Alabama 24-7 there in the second quarter. And here we are with 13 ticks left to go in the third. 
And West Alabama trailing at 31-14 as the banged up Angelo State player makes his way to the sideline. And Angelo State is just, they're good, folks. First down and 10, West Alabama, three wide receiver set. Hands it off to Brown. Brown on the carry, and I think he's going to lose a yard on the play. A whole lot of nothing for Antonio right there. Tackle by number 41, Josh Booker Brown, the junior out of Houston, Texas. That'll do it for the third quarter. We'll have one stanza to play on here on Flow Sports and your station for Tiger football, slyrock.com. And following via slyrock.com, whether it be on the radio or the or the app, West Alabama trails this one 31-14. We've got 15 minutes to play. West Alabama scored seven in the first, seven in the second, was held scoreless in the third. Angelo State, seven in the first, three there in the second, 21 unanswered in the third as West Alabama it's Tucker Melton, four of 16, 93 yards, one big 77-yard strike there. He's thrown two picks, excuse me. Spencer Arsenault has played at quarterback position tonight. And Tucker Melton wants to throw across the middle, and that's going to go right into the hands of one of the Rams players that looks like Amaya Williams. And it just right into the hands there. Um, unfortunate throw. Third interception of the afternoon slash evening for Tucker Melton. And not the way you wanted to start off the fourth quarter if you are a Tiger fan. 414 yards of total offense. For the Rams, 138 for West Alabama, 108 in the air, 30 on the ground. Looks like that's going to be Ferries. Ferries is in with, I um, believe that's, is that Phillips or Wilcox? Looks like Wilcox to his left. So Ferries rolls left. Waits on a blocker. Ferries takes a hit. He does take a hit. That's going to be a nice tackle after a one-yard gain for West Alabama. Ferris. Looks like number 32, Jamal Ellis, in on the stop for the Tigers after a yard, maybe two on the game. Wilcox staying at running back. Um, bringing, in, bringing in a new tight end, looks like. Might be... Number 80. 
Donnie Bishop. Yep. Donnie, Donnie Bishop. Bishop rolling in there. Garner. Midland, Texas native. Hands off, carry up the middle. Gain a couple of yards on the play. We hit the 14-minute mark. And it's just, again, the name of the game at this point is just stop them, stop any form of bleeding you can. Seems that um, Wilcox and Wilcox trying to stay in. Garner's in at quarterback. Wilcox will be in. Check again for West Alabama. That's going to be Uriah Ratliff. Two wide receivers here to the near side, two to the top side. Third down and five from the eight for the Rams. He puts a man in motion. That's Wilcox. Wants to throw across the middle. Pass is going to be complete, but it'll be short of the end zone. Short of the, end zone. Short, short of the first down, too, by about maybe an inch. It seems from where we're sitting. It is very close. I I wouldn't be shocked if Angelo State just keeps their offense on the field. Linebacker change for West Alabama. Trayvon Nunn will come in. Got a defensive score earlier on. Boy, that'd be nice right now. Twelve forty-five on the clock. Officiate. They're going to let this one, uh, they're going to let it run down one on the playcock. Angelo State will call the timeout. We'll take it with them. Your station for Tiger Football, SlyRock.com, and watching on Flow Sports. A lot of folks that uh, that typically listen to Tiger football, I see them in the stands tonight. They love the uh, the home environment here. It's a big day today. It's it's, it's football. I mean, that, well, it doesn't get better than that. Football's back. I mean, it's not exactly football weather right now. It's about 85 degrees, at no, 10 it, p.m. It's hot, but, but we'll, we'll <laughs> deal with that. Deal with that. Renovations of stadiums, everyone down the Tiger rooms, having new Tigers having a good time. Fourth down and one. Maybe one inch. Ferry's in. He's going to keep it. He wants to go right side. They get a good push up front on that offensive line. Now they've got to keep him out of the end zone. He's going to get the first down, I would imagine. But the Tigers keep him out of the end zone as Ferry's. I mean, it's, it's been pretty much automatic. If he comes in, he's going to run the football. His e, Let's see, that's his sixth run. He's got 32 yards. They haven't called a first down or a fourth down yet, and a few of our guys waving their hand like we got the ball. We'll see. It looked like a pretty good surge up front from our vantage point, but we aren't in line with it. And that is... They are going to change the marker on the sideline. to Angelo State football keeps the ball, and Wilcox goes out the field. His helmet came off. So first down and goal from the two for the Rams. Garner stays in. First push doesn't make it. He bounces it out, rolls in, and Garner will go in for the score for Angelo State. 
and they will extend their lead for the time being. 37 to 14 with 12.06. In to attempt the PAT is going to be Bradley Larson. In to hold is Fuller. Good hold. That kick is up. Larson bangs it in. 38-14 your score. West Alabama trails. 12.06 remaining in the contest. And, you know, West Alabama... You know, started off uh, on a pretty good clip here, but they have been held scoreless. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium, 12.06 to go in this one. Rams lead at 38-14. As West Alabama, they will send out the return team. Larson gets ready to kick this one away. He'll be kicking from his 35. That one will be kicked away. End over end. That one will hit at the five. Bounces into the hands of Walker. Walker will bring it across the 10. The 15 lowers his head. He goes one on one. And he'll be taken down at the 18 yard line after a. That's about a. Like a 15 yard return. Checking back in. At the quarterback position. For West Alabama will be Spencer Arsenault. Hunter Kilpatrick will be in the backfield. Tyler Walker in at wide receiver on the top side of the field. First down and 10 for the Tigers. Kilpatrick on the carry. He'll get maybe a yard on the play before he's brought down. The wide receiver here to the near side. That's going to be Darius Nelson. Second down, nine to go. Nine and a half to go for West Alabama. Eleven and a half minutes to play. Three wide receivers. Two wide receivers to the top side. It's Arsenault. Fakes the handoff. Pressure. Sack. Angelo State with a sack, leading the way right there. Number 35, that's Kenton Allen, Jr. from Riverside, California. Yeah, that play just never had a chance. I mean, from the get-go, he just, he, he was in the backfield. Arsenault had maybe a second to think at most before he had hands in his face. Big loss on the play. 
Official comes in from the far side. It'll be timeout Angelo State. We'll take it with them on Flow Sports and your station for Tiger football, slyrock.com. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. Just under 11 minutes to go here in this one. 38-14, your score. Angelo State on top. They're coming into Livingston after a 12-1 season last year that ended in the quarterfinals of the NCAA Division II playoffs. Picked to repeat as Lone Star State Conference winners. They have, uh, they have found... They have found their groove here in the second half. They scored 21 points in the third quarter. They've added seven here in the fourth. Hand off to Kilpatrick. Off right tackle. He'll get back to the original line of scrimmage. So he gains ah, four, maybe five yards on the play. And you mentioned earlier they were one of the uh, – they're, they're, they're the, one of the big dogs or the big dog in the LSC. That's That's been a conference. It hasn't, it hasn't been around all that long now. Maybe about – Ten years at, at most, I suppose, but it's been a pretty powerful conference. It's been around it's a very, so, very solid league, and uh, they, they, they do it right. That's for sure. It's been neck and neck with the GSC. A few national championship matches have been Lone Star and GSC teams. Trey Sullivan to punt it away. Good snap. Flag on the field. Tight spiral. Everybody stops, and it looks like we're gonna. Looks like a false start on West Alabama. I'm afraid you might be right. And the official confirms. So that's going to put Trey Sullivan back probably about three yards deep into the end zone. Sullivan on the day. This will be his eighth punt. He's averaging 37 yards per. The return man stands at the 50. Sullivan gets that one away. Nice kick. It'll be fielded at the... Angelo, 48, great coverage by West Alabama. It'll be a three-yard return as he gets it into Tiger territory, right about the Tiger 48-yard line. So Trey Sullivan doing his part right there, but once again, Angelo State with great field position as they will start this drive inside Tiger territory. We're under 10 minutes to play here. We'll see what, we'll see what the Angelo State can do. I have... Like I said, last few drives, they've just been going off of these big over-the-top plays. Who did they bring out of the court? They brought their backup quarterback in, number 17. That's Hagen Garvin, senior from Yoakum, Texas. So Garvin's in at quarterback. Yoakum, Texas. Puts a man in motion. Garner, hands off. It'll be Wilcox near, near side. He's going to gain three yards, maybe four on the play. Is this, is this, uh, this? Number 16. They're swapping quarterbacks on us, folks. Again. That's going to be Braden Fuller. I, under, I understand this. I mean, you, you, you want to get some folks some opportunities, and, and they're going to get a little feel for game speed. It's way different um, than going against the ones and twos in practice each afternoon. That one will be blown dead false start on um, Angelo State right there, but in Angelo State, I mean, they the other kid they just brought in, Hagen Garvin, he, he played for maybe a game. He played for, a, he was only in for about a play. Um, and part of me fumbling over my words right there, but this kid, are they going to swap him out every play, or do they have, that's four quarterbacks on their roster. The depth is uh, definitely something that they have on their side. Do the Rams. It'll be second down and 11. Another Flags flag. once again coming in. I'm going to assume once again. Yeah, another false Movement start. on the side of the Rams. Umpire walked right up in number 57's face. 
and did the thing to him. So I'm guessing 57, he's the center. I'm guessing he's just twitching the ball. Maybe he sneezed or something. Who knows? But this is the second time in a row he's had a penalty on him for this for, for specifically um, false start. Second down and a while. Angelo State, they will work from their own 46-yard line, hand off to Wilcox. He gets across the line of scrimmage, and then he gets three more. Back out to midfield. Clock doing its thing. It's continuing to move. We got 840 remaining in the contest. Tigers trail 38-14. It's just third down and 12. Garvin's going to be back in at quarterback, 6'2", 200, senior from Yoakum, Texas, product of Yoakum High School. It just That sounds like a city in Texas, Yoakum. Sounds like a rodeo town to me. Yeah. Sounds like a stockyard type town. Handoff, balls on the ground. West Alabama comes up with it, and they're going to say he was down. Angelo State gets a break right there. Fourth down and about nine. They're just they're just gonna punt it. Coming out to do the punting once again will be Cade Fuller. Back to return for West Alabama will be Darius Nelson. Coach, Coach Brett Gilliland, he out about near some. out near the numbers. Is he challenging a? I think he's challenging a fumble. We'll see as the officials sort this one out. While they sort it out, we'll take a break here on Flow Sports and your station for Tiger football. Slyrock.com. Yeah, they're challenging. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. The officials still huddled in the replay tent there. That is, can be found here in Tiger Stadium, right even at the 10-yard line. It's indicated with the Gulf South Conference tent there. One of the many first, uh, one of the many new additions we've had this season, and I do not know what video feed they're going off of i would assume it's not the flow broadcast it is not no. oh, i see they're on the um far end zone facing um, stadium drive um there is a gentleman with a camera and i believe that's for the replay he's on a platform so whatever whatever the determination was it was that uh it was a fumble and uwa lost timeout there and looks like we're about to receive the ball on a punt Fourth down and about 11. Nelson stands at his own 10-yard line. High snap, Fuller, end over end punt. Nelson calls for the fair catch, and he'll 
He'll gather that one in at about the 12 yard line. So West Alabama will start first down. First down and 10 from about the 12. 727 remaining in this one, 38 14. Angelo State's gained 473 total yards of offense, 323 in the air, 150 on the ground. West Alabama, 132, 93 in the air, 39 on the ground. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Arson is back in at quarterback. Snap, Arsenault wants to throw out of the backfield. Pass complete, shake and bake there at the numbers. You make it's about maybe two, three yards. That would be complete to number 20. That's going to be Hunter Kilpatrick. Yeah. Out of the backfield, he's uh, he's he's gotten in several plays here. Got himself a catch tonight, a couple of carries. So positive play for Kilpatrick. He gains one yard. Kilpatrick on the carry wants to go in behind the left tackle. He's going to pick up another yard. So two plays, two yards. Two plays, two yards. Six forty remaining. 38-14, Rams over the Tigers. At this point in the ball game, you just you just got to play safe. You don't do anything insane. You're six minutes to go in the ball game. Just make sure everyone's good to go for next week. Really. Four wide receivers for the Tigers. Arsenault surveys the scene. Lots of pressure by the Rams. Arsenault's going to use his feet. He crosses out across the twenty, jumps, and he's wrestled to the ground. At about the 27-yard line. Now, I'll tell you, Spencer Arsenault, 6'1", 180, Mobile, Alabama native, went to McGill Tulin and transferred in last year from Nebraska. And he's, uh, he's, 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 got he's some, pretty agile there. He's shown some flashes. I mean, he needs a little. He, Arsenault he back little to room. throw. Great. Great contain right there and great uh, opportunities. Offensive line doing a good job giving him an opportunity to throw and just couldn't find the open receiver. Tried to go across the middle of the field, and that one will fall incomplete. If, if Arsenal could tighten his play up just a little bit, he can be really dangerous. I mean, we've seen that today. Our own, one of our, our only offensive touchdown in the game was Arsenal breaking it off on the left side of the field. That's going to come with time. He's a, he's a fairly young guy, a redshirt sophomore. Yep, Arsenault snaps, fakes the handoff. He'll keep it, come here near side, around the left end, across the 30, the 40 tripped up, and he'll be marked down at the Tiger 44-yard line, another West Alabama first down. So Arsenault continuing to make plays with his feet. Yeah, he can. He's going to be the leading rusher for this Tiger team after that play. It's 47 yards on the ground on eight carries and a score. Look, if he gets loose at all, he's scary. He can move. We hit the five-minute mark. Arsenault wants to throw. He's got time across the middle. That's going to be a little high intended for John Hilbert and fortunate for West Alabama that that wasn't picked off by number 23. Onye Oropobo. As that one falls incomplete, but uh, West Alabama here with under five minutes to play. Trying to work out a few things. Spencer Arsenault at the helm here. Hand off to the back. Comes near side. He'll be wrestled out of bounds. That's going to be number 22, someone we haven't seen this afternoon, Tyler Smith, the junior out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, he prepped at Hillcrest High School. He gets a nice little run right there. There's always one or two good running backs coming out of Hillcrest. It's like St. Paul's. They always have some quarterback coming out of there. Four wide receivers. It'll be Arsenault in the gun. Flushed out to his right. He's going to use his legs. He'll get the corner across the 50. The Angelo State 40 pushed out of bounds and upended at the Rams. We'll call it 37-yard line. So Spencer Arsenault continues to you 
know, show some some definite athleticism. When he's able to get the corner, uh, definitely can use his speed to his advantage. If he sees a, if he sees a mistake, he's going to take it. Um, I don't know if this. I don't know if he knows how to slide yet. He's taken a few good hits tonight. Tyler Smith to Arsenault's right. Stack wide receivers here to the near side. Arsenault wants to throw. Pump fakes. Wants to go across the middle. He's got Kilpatrick in and out of the hands of Kilpatrick. Excuse me. That is Caleb Bass. And Bass not able to make a football move. It was dislodged right before he was able to bring it down. But a pretty good throw right there as Caleb Bass trying to get into the mix there from the tight end spot. Three twenty nine remaining, 38-14 your score. Tigers trail it. Still a whole lot of folks here in the in the stands here in Tiger Stadium supporting this Tiger football team. Second down and 10. Tigers inside. Rams territory pressure for Arsenault. He flings it up. And that one will go out of bounds he right near the cheerleaders there. He's just trying to get rid of it to avoid the sack and a, and a, good, a good job right there by Arsenault. He's under extreme duress that entire time. And he was halfway on the ground when that ball left his hand. Third down and 10. 3.22 remain. The Tigers work from the Rams 39 yard line. It'll be a four wide receiver set. Arsenault in the gun from the right hash. He steps back. Pressure. He'll be wrestled to the ground. That's going to be big number 91. Cravani Johnson, 6'1, 251, redshirt sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. He's able to pull Arsenault down. Loss of about it's loss of about ten on the play. It looks like Coach Gillen's gonna keep Arsenault out there in the offense. Fourth down, seventeen to go under three minutes. A little surprised he's not punting here, but under three minutes. Four wide receivers. Arsenault surveys the scene. He wants to go down the middle of the field. That one's going to be overthrown. Um, I believe Caleb was... Bass just trying to knock it down uh, to avoid the interception. But actually, in, in that instance, the interception wouldn't have been horrible as far as a field position type scenario. But uh, West Alabama will turn it over on downs. Uh, honestly, the way the play looked up, uh... It looked like that was intended for number two, if anyone, because he had the far out route, and he had a decent bit of separation. He was holding his head if it came off, so it might have been intended for him, but doesn't matter now. Let's see who the Rams go with at quarterback. I Looks think they're going to go back with Garvin. Hand off to Wilcox. He wants to go left side. Patient running right there, but a good tackle after about a yard gain by West Alabama. That's going to be number 38, Michael Sharpley. Um, number, Angela, say that's not Wilcox. And that's number 31. That's uh, Jaden Jones out of um, – he's another one from Yoakum. Freshman out of Yoakum. Check again for West Alabama, Cam White. Laura, Mississippi native. Clock continuing to roll. We hit the 150 mark. Second down and nine. Hand off. West Alabama in the backfield in a hurry. Tackle made by number 32, Jamal Ellis, senior out of McDonough, Georgia. Loss on the play. 90 seconds to go in this one. Tigers trailing at 38-14. More substitutions for West Alabama. That'll be number 25, the Lawrence Butler. It's odd sitting here in the dark trying to read. It is very unnatural, very uncanny, but third down and 11 for the Rams. 
Back bounces it out left side, wants to turn back up the middle. He'll get across the 50-yard line before he's wrestled to the ground. Again, that'll be Jaden Jones out of Yoakum, Texas. Jones on the carry, 40 seconds to go. Fourth down and three feet to go. They're going to go for it here. Why not? 20 sec 28 seconds of the ball game. Garvin in the gun. He'll keep it. He'll be upended, and I think they'll they'll stop him short of the first down marker. Good tackle right there by West Alabama. Twelve ticks of the clock's all that remain. West Alabama will will uh, gain possession there on downs. Don't worry, we still have two timeouts. So we can do something with it. 12 seconds to go as West Alabama's huddled on the sideline. They trail it 38-14, West Alabama. Seven in the first, seven in the second, scoreless since. Looks like West Alabama's got another quarterback in. I think that's Alex Young. True freshman. He surveys the scene. Pass complete over to the far side. It'll be a positive play. That's Jackson Abbott, Jr., out of Maplesville, Alabama. He completed the pass. Positive yards, but that will do it for the home opener as the... Clock is showing zero unless the official puts it, time on that he that the receiver got out of bounds. Receiver got out of bounds. There's supposed to be an extra three, four seconds on the clock. So honestly, if you're uh, living, if you're UWA here, just check it. Maybe throw a screen pass. I'll Six seconds back on the clock. Second down and five. Four wide receivers, two to either side. Quarterback steps back. Pass complete across the middle. That's going to be the number six, Chris Benyon. Benyon gets across the 40, gets pushed out of bounds at about the 36-yard line, and that will do it this time. The unhappy final, 38-14. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap up the stats, and we'll let you know what else is going on. In Tiger football, you're watching Flow Sports and listening on SlyRock.com. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium, the unhappy final. If you're a Tiger fan, 38-14, the Tigers fall the number five Angelo State Rams. And uh, the Rams, they, they are a solid football team. They were able to put up 482 yards of total offense, 323 
in the air, 159 on the ground. At quarterback, 16 of 29 was Gerald Gardner, 292, two touchdowns, two, two picks. And coming in late, Braden Fuller went one for two for 23 yards. Chad Ferry's one for one. Seven different uh, Rams carried the football tonight. Braden Wilcox, eight carries for 75 yards. He had a score, his long of 77 yards. He averaged 9.4. Chad Ferry's in that Wildcat quarterback position, seven carries, 36 yards, long of 23. Kaysen Phillips had a lot of touches, 11 touches, 36 yards, averaged 3.3. Six carries for Jaden Jones for 20 yards. And then a couple of carries here for Hagen Garvin, and Braden Fuller that came in at quarterback receiving. They moved it around a lot, folks. 18 catches by 10 different receivers. Hunter Wallace, four catches, 41 yards. Zoran Redu, one of those players to watch, three catches for 67. Braden Wilcox, three catches for 28. Kyle Bradford, two catches for 98. And then these guys all had one. Kel Williams, Drew Carstens, Rasheen Green, Kaysen Phillips, Stephen Woods, and Albert Thomas, the fourth. For West Alabama, Buck 96 total offense, 116 in the air, 80 all on the ground. Tucker Melton, four of 17 for 93 yards. He had three interceptions. Spencer Arsenault, one for six for just one yard. And Jackson Abbott, two for two for 22 yards. On the ground, Spencer Arsenault led the way. In yards, 10 carries, 51 yards, and a touchdown. He averaged 5.1. Bry Webb, early on, he had three carries for 14. Antonio Brown, he got the most touches tonight, 12 carries for 12 yards. Tyler Smith had a carry. Hunter Kilpatrick got three carries for five yards. And in the receiving core tonight, six different receivers with passes caught, uh, including Two catches for Darius Nelson, then one catch each for Tyler Walker, Caleb Bass, John Hilbert, Tyler Smith, and Hunter Kilpatrick. One of the things you look at, you start looking at uh, turnovers. That was a situation, three turnovers for Angelo State and five for West Alabama. And time of possession was, was nearing even, 29-12 for the Rams, 26-03 for West Alabama, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things that Coach Gilliland said it, uh, you know, in the interview. You, you want to be the best, you got to play the best, and, you know, looking at the schedule, and we'll do that in just a second. I mean, this is a, this is a good, this is a good warm-up and test to see, you know, what we're going to be like. And, and I, yeah. I think there are some definite uh, highlights, uh, you know, for this ball club. Yeah, we saw some flashes. Defense looked particularly good in the first half. Um, like, particularly good. And the defense had some, the defense had some um, stops even in the second half, but it got to a point where defense just was gassed and offense wasn't helping out much. And well, you talk about the defense, Jamarcus Smith, he added – Tonight, 10 tackles, eight of the solo variety. With five tackles tonight, Shamar Lewis and Jamal Ellis. With four tackles, Kel Williams, Trayvon Stanford, Mario Nichols, Devontae Jackson, Devontae Bryant, and Travarius Hatcher. They each had four. I mean, we got guys flying all over tonight. And let's not forget two interceptions by Artavius Washington, the senior out of Lexington, Mississippi. I mean, so... You know, there are some bright spots, and, you know, it's one of those deals that we've started the season on a Thursday. Now we're going to have a long prep, you know, for the next games. And, and coming up, this is what the schedule looks like. I should have told you about this in the pregame. Back-to-back -back road trips Both North to, Carolina. to South Carolina. We'll go to Limestone next week, North Greenville the following week. And then September 23rd, we'll have Mississippi College here at home. That'll be a 6 o'clock kick, followed by a home Delta game the end September. That'll be a 4 o'clock kick. And then we're going to go road, home, road, home, road, um, as we will go to West Georgia October 7, host West Florida for homecoming October 14, and then we'll have to travel to Shawan. That's in North Carolina. It's almost Virginia. That's coastal North Carolina, which is almost mm -hmm. Virginia. 
And then we'll have Valdosta State at home the first part of November on November 4th. And then in November, November the 11th, we'll go to Rome, Georgia for a noon kickoff over there at Shorter. I mean, so there's a lot going on with this football team and a lot of teams to play that are currently ranked in, you know, the top 25. I'm looking at it. You're talking about the likes of Delta State, Delta West State. Florida, West Georgia, mm -hmm. and Limestone's receiving votes. I mean, we have among the toughest schedules in Division II, I would have to say. I would, I would agree with you. I mean, like the GSC – is a conference that always has some extremely solid talent at the top. I mean, heck, North Greenville, they've been a problem for us in the past. Not even Can't even sugarcoat that. Uh, Mississippi College, Delta State. Delta State was voted by the coaches at the media days to be finished first in the conference. West Georgia is always tough, always tough over Carrollton. West Florida, West Florida, they're still a new, new program. They have new, they've have they been around for about six years. They have two national championships. Um yeah, it's 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 a tough conference, and, and it's one of those things that, you know, I think that you can take tonight. You can break it down. They'll be able to get into the, the film room, break that down, and then instead of just having a week to, to prepare when we go to Limestone, I mean, they're going to have a week and some change, you yeah. know. So that, that will factor in. Um, and West Alabama over the last couple of years has played well on the road, um, you know, so I look forward to that and, you know, it was uh, not the not the the final that you wanted here, but I think there are some things that West Alabama can build off of uh, as we move forward. I mean, we saw that in the first half. I mean, like I said, going into halftime, I mean, we were we weren't up at half, if I'm not mistaken, but we were close. We were up for a good bit of the first half. Oh yeah. So I mean, it, it's not like this team is bad. I'm, I'm what we saw tonight. UWA played an opponent who is number five in the country for a reason. They are easily the best team in one of the best conferences in Division Two. Well, but it was it was uh, it, it's it was definitely a hard fought game, and uh, West Alabama they fall thirty eight fourteen, but they've got an opportunity to, you know, kind of uh, evaluate and get ready to go to Limestone, and you know. We're going to be doing some things a little different uh, throughout the course of the, the season this year. And, you know, I appreciate Philip uh, stepping in and, and, and filling a, you know, a void that we had tonight. Uh, I don't know, know if he, I'll be back, but. <laughs> I guarantee you, it, you will be back in some capacity. Uh, uh, you and I have lots of games to cover uh, this year between between the sports that uh, that we follow, so I appreciate that. You did a great job, yes, and you know I'd like to thank our producer back in the station, Mr. Wayne Grant. He's a rock star. Uh, you know it's it's uh, it's awesome to have uh, awesome people to work with. The unhappy final here in Tiger Stadium, 38-14 for the entire broadcast crew tonight. Philip Aikens here on color, Mr. Wayne Grant back in the station. I'm Will Atkinson. Good night and go Tigers. <laughs>